Welcome Damn. to another amazing Welcome. episode of Elephant Pick. I am your host, Frank Roth, the elephant in the room. Uh, this is my show in which uh, I like to say that music and nightlife connect, which kind of makes sense, right? Because that's kind of the things that, that everybody's in here for, everybody in here dabbles in uh, or has dabbled in. Uh, make sure you like us on YouTube, uh, comment, subscribe, that helps with the algorithms. Uh, and I, I just want to get straight to it. I got got some interesting guests here. Some have been here before in other episodes, and some it's it's brand new. So I'm gonna start to my right. <laughs> uh, let's start. Let's start to my right. Oh, and also before you guys, before we get started with the questions, because I got plenty of questions for you guys. I just want you guys to understand that if you guys don't want to answer a question, it's totally fine. But if you don't answer the question, you have to take a shot. Is that understood, guys? Oh, it's given toxic. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to my right, I have Gabby Angel C on Instagram. I'm an entrepreneur. I own a media company and a used car dealership. And I uh, used to be a promoter. Okay. What's up, y'all? This big girl must catch me if you can. DJ Simi Blends. My turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She made it short and sweet. <laughs> That's why I was waiting for more. Um, my name is Priscilla Sanchez, and everybody knows me as Priscilla CEO, and I own Crown Society Entertainment. Last but not least. Uh, my name is Monty. My Instagram is All City Monts. I own All City Productions, Inc. My nickname is Papa Indio, your favorite Indian Dominican. That's facts. And um, I make 16 years in the game uh, in November this year. Nice. nice. 16 years is no joke. Yeah. So let, 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 let's, start, let's start a little bit with you. What... Uh, what 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 got you into this game? I was well, well the first, promotion game, well, the club promotion game. Business wise, yeah. All right. Well, I was like 15, 16, high school, going to house parties, grabbing the mic. Yo, what's up? Turn up. Keep that bitch up. Yo, use the wall. Yo, you pussy. Stop using the wall. <laughs> Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was just like a hype man. And um, I did my 17th birthday in a club. Turning 18, I was 17, turning 18. It was 18, a party, 21, a drink done. And the promoter was like, oh, I need a guest list. I had like 250 names on that guest list. Wow. wow. 160 showed up. I did 160 times 20, and I said, damn, this nigga made like 3K off of me. Fuck that. And what you made, $25? No, I just did my birthday. Oh, you just did it for... Because back, back in the days was, yep. you had to have a guest list. If you didn't say the promoter's name or you didn't yeah. wasn't on the guesses, your ass was getting charged more. Ladies was not free till 12. It was only if you said, I'm on Monty's guest list. Shit like that. The game is different say now. Say Monty at the door. Exactly. Or you would literally have a list and there'd be a girl there with a clipboard with a highlighter. Oh, Priscilla. Oh, Sammy Blunt. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you would get in. Okay. Times change now. but So then I was like, hold on. I did the math and I'm like, I'm 18. 160 people came out for me. The fuck am I doing making this guy three, four K at the door? I went to East New York. I'm from Queens, but everybody considers me a Brooklyn nigga, anyhow. Um, so I went to a, a spot in East New York, and I was like, "How much is it to rent this out for the night?" And um, he was like, "Yo, I make a deal with you: five dollars per person that pays, and ten dollars per person that pays after a certain time, and you keep the rest." The DJ I had was actually Steve Nevis. I met him in college. Shout out to Steve Nevis from Nevis. Queens. Yes. Puerto Rican freak. Yeah. 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 That's what he calls AKA himself. Yes. fucking the champ with the belt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he was actually a friend of mine in college. And I told him, like, yo, I'm doing this party. It's my birthday. I turned this. Day. He's like, yo, put me the DJ. He was the only DJ on the party. There was a flyer with him, me, and that's it. And I made printouts. I was handing them shits out in the lunch, all that. Cafeteria, college. I went to every high school, whatever. Day of the party, I had like... You was wildin' in college? What's wildin'? What's wildin' to you? <laughs> college. We're talking about college. I mean, it's not like I was in a dorm. I was in... Oh, you were, you, but that's not what I... I didn't ask you. Nah, did I wasn't, you I wasn't wildin'. You wasn't wildin'? I'm a low-key nigga. I wasn't wildin'. Okay, you were, but how are you low-key, but you're, you're popular enough to bring... 100 plus people to your party. I mean, I was on the varsity team oh. in basketball. I was on the bowling team in school, best dress, class clown. I had okay. every fucking category uh, so, in, so in you, high school. You were one of the cool kids. I was lit. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So 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 to, just to fast forward a little bit, that's what started you off. The party, 
that I did, I invited like 400, 500 people, 300 people came. I made like 5K, I was 18 years old. I went to Jamaica Ave, the next day was Saturday, I bought Jordans, I bought fucking- All the, all the stuff that doesn't even matter now. <laughs> I bought a chain, no, nah, I didn't buy a chain. I was gonna buy a chain, I was like, no, nah, I don't need this yet. I bought some sneakers, I bought an outfit, I'm like, oh shit, give me another date. And then I did one every month. And, and then, then I went to straight into, because back then I was 18 a party, I went straight into the nightclub. And I just did 18 and over college parties. And just to fast forward a little bit, now, now, well, fast forward a lot of bit. Now we're here. <laughs> now we're here, correct? Yeah. All City Productions. Yep. All City Monty. Yep. Okay, that's a beautiful thing. Now let's, let me, I want to, I want to, I want to move around a little bit. Let's talk about, let, let's talk to you, Sammy. Let, how did you start? I know we had another episode, but I, I want you to, you know, kind of give us the quick run through of how Sammy Blunt started. Oh, yeah. Nah, I definitely started like in a house party scene. Like I started DJing back when I was 15 years old. Uh, my mom, she actually, I started with like the laptop era was at its peak. So like I started originally like off a of virtual DJ. Me too. So like I was always, I was already like, like when I stumbled upon like the house party scene, like, you know, I was I was a minor or whatever the case may be, but it's like all the old heads was there. I, I promise you this, there's not a club that was better ran than dumb house parties. I'm talking about, it was like <laughs> VIP sections. We talk about There was security. VIPs in the house party? Yo, I'm telling you, yo, they used to go full nine. So, I mean, inev it's inevitable. I'm gay. You get what I'm saying? So the gay house party scene in the Bronx, by the way, I'm born and raised in the BX. Big Bronx. Heard Big Bronx. It, Bronx. It, Finally, it. somebody from the Bronx here with Yes, heard born it. and raised. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, when the house party scenes was like at its peak or whatever the case may be, my mom, she ended up getting me this laptop or whatever, and I had talked to one of my homies. A lot of people didn't know this before I even DJ. Like, I used to like, I used to like dance. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a stripper. For anybody, I'm, I was <laughs> not a stripper. Was, I didn't even think that. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, like, like, getting light, people. right? Getting crunk. Nah, nah, like yeah, yeah. Like I used to really like break dance, do the whole nine. Oh, you was so. part of Dessa. What happened? You was Dessa. You was all them crew. Nah, nah. They used to hire me because the girls used to say like, "Yo, you got nice eyes." So they was like, "All right, let's use your little dance moves." And then you work for tips. I'm like, "All right, cool. I can live." You was out here wilding. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, what, what? <laughs> what? Was you out here wilding, Sam? <laughs> Easy, Frank. We just started. If you don't want to answer, you? I mean, if you don't want to answer, just it's nah, a yes nah, or no question. No, no, I wasn't wilding. I wasn't wilding. Okay. I was always Notice about my everybody money. Never, 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 I, okay. I respect everybody's okay. relationship. Or I went in, made my money, and I did. Okay. Now, nah, but whatever. Um, my mom's again keep circling back to that. Got the laptop. I talked to one of my peoples. I was like, yo, I want to get this uh, the DJ software because I was really eclectic on my ears from like a young and because I was in the dance world. So when that happened, she literally said, all right, bet. We downloaded the software onto the laptop. And literally that very night, I DJ my first house party. Damn. She was like, yo, this is the sync button, this, that, the third. I'm like, all right, bet. Whatever. We're going to do it. And literally, like, everybody took me as a joke, of course. Like, oh, here goes this. This chick, you know, trying to follow the modes or whatever. And literally, I used to roll with this little entertainment. That was when the entertainment was, like, at its peak. Yeah. And I literally started DJing damn near every house party that was curated, like, in the Bronx, like, in the gay scene. You know, because there was mad entertainments, like, against each other the yeah, whole time. Yeah, there, that, there was damn near gangs at the, at, at, a, at a point. Like, oh, the, yeah, the yeah. TNTs, like... No, nah, it was were like, like really like <laughs> it was serious. It was bad. Bro. It was real, real. Yo, like, so I see it was bad. I started seeing like how much money I was like I was making. Like you know, I was charging like two fifty a gig at the time. You understand? I ended up getting some speakers. We ain't gonna talk about how I got those speakers, but I got the speakers. You got the speakers. <laughs> You're in the Bronx, the Bronx way. In the Bronx way. You, you uh -huh. got you got speakers. That's we, all we I got. Say. Some speakers. You get what I'm saying? And I started investing in myself more and more. And then uh, one of my OGs from my block, he actually was like, "Yo." You dope, because I always had, like, the ear for blending, like, right off rip. Like, I, I just picked it up naturally, and he was like, yo, I think you'll do really good on vinyl. Let's take it back. So, literally, by the time I was 16, I started there. And the first club that I ever DJed, and I don't even want to give nobody no free promo, but I got the residency at uh, Starlet's. And you know who gave me my uh, mm. opportunity? I am DJ Mello. Uh, Mello from back in the day who was uh, okay. the resident DJ. That's actually, he took me under the wing and he okay. molded me the right way. So from there, it was just like a work-by-work -work process. And DJing is what I've done to this point in my life. I've never had to go to a nine-to-five result to anything else. I'm 15 years in the game now. You know what I'm that, saying? That's a beautiful thing. So you, know? um, you feel me? So it's just been like 
you know, spawn from there and all that. I want to take it back from there. And, and it's a snowball that turns into avalanche. Yes. And it's going to continue growing. Yeah. Right? That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I want to I wanna pick up something that you said really quick before we get to our other guests. Right. Um, you said that you never had a nine to five or you never had to do that. Now, I just want to, because a lot of DJs come up to me and even promoters and stuff like that, they come up to me and they, and they, they feel like if you're a DJ or a promoter with a nine to five, they feel like somehow you're doing bad. And I want to emphasize that that's, there's nothing wrong Absolutely not. with that. Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit, even though you've never had that experience. But just as somebody that never had the 9 to 5, I want, I want to emphasize the fact that just because you work in nightlife and you have a 9 to 5, there's nothing wrong with that. No, nah, because at the end of the day, you need residuals in order to invest in yourself. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They think, oh, you're going to throw on some nice chains, a nice look. You're going to scream on a mic. You're going to chop it up a little bit. There's a, like, you know, and the DJ game is very different. You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of talented DJs out here. Facts. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it's like you're just not going to be successful off of that. It's all about how you invest within your business and all about how, like, you branch off and create your network. So having a nine-to-five job, like, if you are chasing something, whether you are a promoter, whether you are a DJ, or whatever it is that you're chasing as an entrepreneur, take that as your residual for your investment and then spike whatever you're making within your dream, you get me, and build off of that. You get what I'm saying? So That's I don't think there's nothing wrong with a nine to five at all. That's facts. I have two more guests. Hold on, let's stop real quick. Guys, when y'all smoke the hookah, try not to smoke it when the person's I'm, talking. Cause it's like, I noticed that. I started yeah. smoking it. That's what comes on. Like it's going up to you. All right, so y'all, y'all got it? Y'all good? All right, so let's... So anyway, so now we, have, we still have two more guests. So now we have somebody here to my right also, Gabby. So you want to talk a little bit about your come up and how you started? So... When I was uh, younger, I used to be a, a little troublemaker. I used to be in and out of schools. <laughs> Just a little bit. I used to, a yeah, a little you bit. You was wilding? Uh, he been yeah, lying since the beginning. Finally, <laughs> somebody that says they're wilding. Finally. I, I had to grow up. I had to do a lot of maturing. Um, but I used to be in and out of schools. So I got kicked, just I got kicked out of schools a lot. So that's when I started learning, new, meeting a lot of new people. Because every school I went to, I, I became cool with people. Even though I would not last a long time there. But, like, if I tell you the numbers of schools I've been to, you wouldn't believe me, but... You got to give us a number. Six. <laughs> Double digits. Oh, my God. I think I broke God. a record. You was wilding, wilding. wilding. I broke a record the fuck was you in, doing? In the Bronx. <laughs> I'm from the Bronx. But um, I, I was in and out of school, so that, like, kind of helped build, like, yo, like, how, how do you know kids from Castle Hill? How do you know kids from Manhattan? How do you know kids from it? It's because of that. And then um, I started selling sneakers because I was like, you know, I want to make some money to, to get fly myself. My father always had this, like, idea was, like, you gotta earn what you what you wear because you never know. Like I could buy you Jordans every week, but then what happens when I can't buy you Jordans? You don't want to hit the streets. So he had to like instill that in me. So I was like, okay, if I if I resell sneakers, then I could um you know use that same profit to buy my sneakers. So that's how I like started getting even more popular because like I used to sell sneakers at like 14, 15. And you know, realistically now it's different, but when we were a little younger, it was hard to see a 14 or 15 year old getting money legit like Absolutely. that, like seeing a lot of money. And that kind of like Got me in the eyes of of a promoting team, like even even though it was a minor promoting team, and I shot them out because they they kind of started my career, which is why CMT, and um, it was uh, a little group of people, and then we all just came together and started throwing parties. I remember you threw parties in in fucking um, basements of churches, like it was all types of things. We we really did a lot of bathgate parties, and everybody knows bathgate. You from oh, the Bronx. Yeah. Like, you know how easy it was to rent the hall and do what you had to do. And, like, the niche that we got into that kind of made us very popular in, in our generation was that we started hiring um, the Latin trap artists who they had just, like, not, they hadn't even hit where they eventually went to, but they'd started buzzing. And a lot of, at the end of the day, people don't realize it, but the nightlife is all about the streets. You know what I'm saying? Realistically speaking, the streets really drives nightlife. So when um, you got 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds listening to Messia, listening to Tali Goya, listening to Lito Carino, you're like, you know what? Let's get them people, even if they're not famous. And guess what? Since they're not famous, they cost $500. Or if they don't call, or maybe maybe because we very connected with certain OGs, they come out for free. So that's what kind of made us different where we're like 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds, but we have Tali at our event. We have Messia at our event. And we can literally say that, put our hat on that, that we had, we're the first people to support the Latin trap movement. And that's kind of what catapulted catapult me into um, the nightlife. Um, from there, I ended up taking a little break. And then a couple months later, I started doing parties of myself. I saw that doing a lot of teams, you know, even though now I know that building the right team around you is essential to 
being a biz, a real entrepreneur. But back then, you know, it was so much drama in between, like, who's getting paid what? Or, like, is someone getting more money? So I was like, you know what? I'm just doing my own thing. And I did my own thing. And then I was so surprised that, like, I threw a, uh, remember I threw a barbecue. Just to be like, okay, I'm back. I threw a barbecue, and I had 1,500 people at that barbecue. And not one incident. Like, to this day, I have videos that, like, you couldn't fit a soul in that in that park. And um, that's how I kind of went through. I'm not, I don't want to be long-winded, but, like, you know, I started throwing barbecue parties. I'm like, okay, let me be smart. If I throw a barbecue party, party on Friday, I mean, on Saturday, on Friday, I could do a paid party. Or I could do vice versa. So it hypes up. So, yeah, I have a 1,000 people going somewhere for free, but I might have 30% of that going if paid. And that's how I started making my money. And eventually, I was able to... Um, be what you call an owner in a way, you just paying rent, um, renting a, a venue, like a little club in the hole in the wall. But that hole in the wall made me a lot of money. And um, that's when people know about the Harmony days. I had a club where I used to put like 300, 400 kids there every week. And that's what made me different that when at that point when everybody else was throwing hall parties, I had a club. So I had full bottle service. I had a lot of things. And that got the eye of a lot of promoters like Miguel, Plaza, and they sketch, you know, and stuff. And even though they couldn't give me a platform because I was still on the age and my crowd was on the age, I know that to this day they have my respect because they were the few people who actually looked at me and saw what I was doing. And a lot of DJs, including yourself, that respected me. And, and even though I wasn't able to bring anybody money, they still respected the hustle I had. Uh, uh, and it's funny because you answered a question that I'm going to ask in, um, in a few. But uh, last but not least, we have... Uh, uh, two-time elephant pick. <laughs> yeah, well, Sammy's also two-time elephant pick and so is Monty, but... Uh, Two-time elephant pick here, Priscilla. So just to explain a little bit of the background, because since I've been on yeah. the show before, um, so I kind of just started off bartending a little bit and then went into hookah at the same venue. It was called Imperial in Bamberg at the time. It's like a Rancho Mateo now. It's yeah, a whole I have restaurant. no idea where that even is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, But I lived there. I grew up there. I went to high school there. And then mm. I moved into bottle service, but the promoters caught that I was booking crazy amount of um, VIPs. Like, it was huge groups coming because of me. Um, and obviously, they love my service, but I was treating it more as I was learning how to promote as well. But it got to a point where they were paying me for promoting and bottle serving, but then other promoters felt a way that I was double dipping. Double dip. Yes. Yo, I, I want to talk about, because you, you kind of hinted at that, like, mm -hmm. people hating and, like, the commotions and issues like that, but I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, but, you know... At the time, like, you know, I'm just starting off. Everybody's young. I'm also, like, first, like, coming into the game. So they gave me um, an option. What do you want to do? I think the promoters didn't think that I was going to say I wanted to be a promoter. So I left bottle service, and I just started promoting, and I was filling up the club, like, half of it on my own. So it just got to a point where it was great, but, you know, money was all right. You know, back then, everybody got paid, like, per person type thing. So it was almost like I was a sub-promoter. So um, everything was going good at the venue, but it started to kind of, they started having issues with the owners. So then we ended up, that team ended up leaving from there. Um, and then from there, I had people always hitting me up from like lobby and stuff and other venues. Shout so, out to lobby in Jersey. Yeah, shout out to Terry. So I ended up um, going into CEO Entertainment. Um, and from there, like I just learned to build. Um, and, you know, a lot of people open doors for me, but I always say it's how you walk in those doors and how you present yourself. I never really mix uh, business with pleasure. I kept out of all the, you know, the crazy, because nightlife is crazy. Like, you need to... Is it? Extremely. Yes. You need to be Extremely. very humble. You need to, especially as a female in the industry, I didn't want people to take me as a joke. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, okay, cool, it's a girl. Like, I could get with her, you know? whether it's, you know, promoters or DJs or whatever, but I always... Yeah, DJs it on you? Yes. What DJs it on you? <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> ah, there's a shot. Take a shot. Where, we take got a first shot, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Where's the bottle at? Where, oh, no, wait, you, want, you wanted this. Okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you. You're double cupped for a reason, but you can continue talking. Anyways. Yes? So, um, you know, I just made sure to, like, uh, move the right way in the industry. Um, and then from there, I gained a lot of respect, um, especially from, like, the OGs in the game and stuff, because they saw that I wasn't playing. Like, I mm. literally was up there to network, to talk to people, to build myself. And then, you know, over time, um, you know, I had to make decisions for myself, and I started doing one-offs. Like, I went back to Imperial. I did my first one-off there. I made so much money my first night, and I had so much support from, like, everybody, like, in my hometown and around the area. 
I was like, wow, I really enjoyed throwing my own event. Um, and from there, um, I continued with CEO Entertainment, but it got to a point where I had to separate. Um, and once I separated it and I, you know, continued as Priscilla CEO, because I couldn't take that name away because everybody was so I was going to ask it. you that. Like, uh, yeah, Priscilla. Everybody's so used to okay. it for years. So, like, I and I tried to do Priscilla Crown Society. And, like, the DJs were like, Priscilla, I'm saying this. Yeah, that's mad long. Yeah, pause. <laughs> I specifically so wait, had. It was CEO and then you just CEO. added the E. No, I had the same dilemma. At the end. I had the same dilemma. When I yeah, so name. then I uh, ended up having yeah. like a few DJs tell me, like especially like my boy DJ Los, he was on stage he's like, "Pre, you killing me, Pre? I have to say all of this." I'm yeah, like, "Just take for the CEO." DJ, stop fucking it up. I know. <laughs> so I got excited. I got my LLC. Um, you know, then I uh, I just kept it as Priscilla CEO of Crown Society. You know, just okay. to make it nice and simple. And from there, I've really just grown. And honestly, I want to thank you too because the last time that I was on. Of uh, the episode, I think it was like a year yeah, was, and a half ago, probably, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, you opened a lot of doors in New York for me. Um, so I got to give you a flowers there. I'm glad I could help, but please take your shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like trying to ignore it. Help, help, Wait, watch this, Frank. Watch that. this, Frank. Help what me. about promoters? Yeah, promoters? but now here's the thing. Wait a minute. You can't ask the questions. I ask the questions. <laughs> so you might to have take to take a first shot because you violated right now. Where's your cup at? It's about not, time. It's about time you take a shot. I'm not How about that? Do you mean you're not drinking? No, no, no. I'm tired of, I'm tired of yeah, like, you. You either either we put the hookah yes, on that side little or little something. Little. Or it's like, not even in my hands. I haven't oh, touched oh, it. You, so you really you really not gonna take it? I'm not gonna force you to if you if you can't. But that's part of the show. So it'd be breaking my heart if you can't take that it's shot. It's 21 and plus. It is not peer pressure. It's no more. Yeah, it ain't peer pressure no more. <laughs> are you are you gonna take the shot? I'll take it in a few minutes. All right, in a few minutes. Fine. Um. Where uh, I, I I forgot exactly because we took a little pause, but um, um, Priscilla, are you dating anybody in nightlife? No, no, and I never have. You never have. No, you never hooked up with anybody in nightlife. Not one person. Not one person. Yep, on oh, my mama. Okay. Wait, what do you mean nightlife? I'm like like yeah. promoters, DJs. What is nightlife, Monty? Like, for somebody wait. that's been in the game for almost wait. fifteen years, not even, customers. Or even else. even a, all right, fine. No, but not, not but too? not even customers. No, custies and all that. That's why I said that. Have you ever? All right, she said no. Yes. Have you ever? <laughs> or are you? Huh? <laughs> are you? Take the shot. Are you? No, because I'm going to ask him very clearly because he wants to be like, huh? Because he's going to have to take the shot. Cause he's what gonna do you mean? Dating or? or other dating, things? hooked up, anything like that. It's it's smashed in the club. Yeah, like, it's you know, happened. Koto, koto, you know, for me. Like, but you <laughs> said you've never done any of that at all. Not Priscilla, even a correct? besito? No, I never have. Not even a besito? Sorry. Like, I literally kept that separate for so long. Okay. Okay, I respect that. Now, Monty. Yes. What's have, the question? Have you ever hooked up, smashed, or even dated somebody in nightlife? Yes. Okay. Gabby? Yeah, I have. Sammy? Of course. It's <laughs> <laughs> never. Of course. <laughs> Co-workers. I, I don't know about Santa. That's why I'm there. surprised. That's why I'm surprised. That, that's why I'm surprised that, that Priscilla said she never has, which is pretty damn impressive. Cause I, Wait, I, hold on. My bad, my bad to cut you off, Frank. But didn't they like they freaking clone like your um your address book and shit like that and started hitting up mad people from nightlife? What? Oh yeah. yeah. Wait, what, <laughs> somebody what? was hitting up different people, like Wait, and saying what? like that they were trying to get them bookings, but it wasn't me. But they were hitting up like people in the industry. So I'm like, anybody can have different. What, so somebody scammed your number? I'm confused. They no, they, they didn't because uh I made sure because you know, it was just like you know, random DJs that they were just contacting through IG. It wasn't, some of them were getting text, which I'm like, they got the numbers from someone someone else because my phone was fine. Have you ever, have you ever <clears throat> been in this, because everybody else here is hooked up with somebody in nightlife or is mm -hmm. dating somebody in nightlife. But besides you, so now I got to ask you more probing questions. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm nervous. is there, is, have you ever rejected a promoter, a DJ or somebody that works in nightlife, but they keep trying, they keep insisting? No, not anymore. I feel like they would try. So like it has happened it. before. Yeah, of course. It's somebody that we all know. Yes. Is this per this person from Jersey? There's some in Jersey and some in New York, oh, some in Miami. Like oh, they're everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. And I say that in the most humble way. I, I think as a woman, it's nice to have a lot of people say like they're trying to get with you or trying to fly you out, trying to this, trying to that. But at the end of the day, that doesn't impress me. Money doesn't impress me. I get my own money. Like you got to bring something else. Like. How are you spiritually? How are you mentally? You know, all of that, that's key uh, to me. And I feel like a lot of people just have these relationships out here that are just like, you know, one night and this and that. I don't get emotionally attached to people like that. In order for me to even 
think about kissing someone or fucking them or whatever the case may be. Like, I have to have a good relationship with you. Like, I need to know you. Okay, so it's not not no one night stands. Never. You would never have a one night stand. Never. Wow, you're, you're, you're I literally you're one, 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 one time in my life I talked to somebody and it was like very short, few little dates. And but did I did, you hook? Oh, you I didn't did what up. I did, but but so, oh, so but, you're lying. Oh so no, you're no, just no 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 no. But wait, it took stand, it took a few months. Oh, it was a couple months. Like, stand. like for example, like if I'm really serious, <laughs> yeah, if I'm really serious about somebody, okay. it takes I I. I literally do this thing where I would not Harvey, sleep with them. Steve Harvey, 90 Day Rule. I could literally sleep in the same bed as them and I would not let them fuck. Oh I swear, I won't Damn. let them fuck. We're grown. We're grown. Damn. Damn. Nah, what? because <clears throat> once you let, uh, I feel like once you go you that route, and, and if they really like you, they're going to be down to yeah. wait for you. Yeah, but most, And they're going to have a lot of OD. respect for you. I don't want to get involved because it's your podcast, mm-hmm. but that's kind of crazy, bro. No, but like if I'm really interested in a guy, I'll be like, all right, cool, like a month and a half, two months in. But like with guys, like I don't know you yet, like that. I'm not gonna I could I could respect a month, a month and a half, but like once it gets to that two month mark, it's like, yo, what are we doing? She got him hooked. She got him hooked. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like I wanna express my affection to you. I wanna whip it out. Let's keep it real. No, I wanna whip it out. No, no, I so y'all want I mean, to wait I for I hear the you as a, as a man that just wants needs, but like if it's a girl like that, I know what I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. So I know I got to be patient, mm-hmm. but like I got to show you affection so and love. So you're not going to want to whip it out after two months? I'm no, going to want to show her some love, yeah. Are you going to want to whip it out after two months? Yeah, if okay, I like the girl. Need, that's all I need to know. Now, <laughs> But not two next, months. It could take qu- three months. My next, my next question is... Four months. My next question is... It's kind of crazy. <laughs> if you have ever had sex or done anything sexually related in the club, hands up right now. <laughs> okay, okay, I mean, okay. Half, half Frank, of the... put your damn hands no, up. No, I, I never know have. Got... I've never hooked oh, up in the club. You know you got I've your dick sucking in the DJ I've booth, never. Yo, stop playing Never, me. never, You know never. she was underneath the turntable never... like, nah, hi, nah, Frank. Nah, Let I, me I, see I, the I, trunk I, of the I, elephant. I, oh, my God. No, no, that's never happened. And but I, outside I, the I, club. Not outside the club. No, no, no. Don't lie. Don't lie. Take a shot for lying. Legally, I didn't lie yet. <laughs> Legally crazy. I can't about remember it. the good long thing time, is that this bro. is my show okay. and not your show, so I don't have to answer. See? So now, <laughs> my, I, I want to ask you guys, whoever, up. anyways, whoever wants to answer, because I have a question. What are the what are the pros and cons of dating somebody in nightlife? Oh my god, Priscilla, you can't answer because you never dated nobody in nightlife. I'm sorry. So, um, is there anybody who could go first? Shit, I go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean. Not that I dated anyone in nightlife, but the overall question was, but like the pros is in a way, is that they understand what you would like. They understand, like you know, this person's gonna get home at four or five in the morning. This person knows so many people. There's gonna be a lot of, especially as a man, you're gonna have a lot of women around you, whether you want to, whether you want them or not. You just, you know, it's just what comes to nightlife. Like if you, I gotta have ten beautiful women in a section in order to bring ten guys who're gonna spend money. That's just, you know. Business one on one, and sometimes. It Do you is agree with that, Priscilla? He that, said that as as a as a as a working in nightlife as a promoter, he's got to have ten pretty girls in order to get the ten, the, the the five guys to spend money. Mm, not in my case, but I think it's different because I'm a female promoter. But I'm saying in general, like, does it make sense as a male promoter? It you, does do make think? sense. Okay. Um, it does make sense because even when I strate- strategically put people into sections, I make sure that there's, like, females in the next section next to them. That way they're spending more. But Okay. It makes, so, so, yeah. it makes so much sense yeah. that owners of a lot of venues will tell you as a promoter, I don't want to see a lot of men in here. Or right. there's too many men in here, you have to get women here. And they will kick you off that night if, you, if that's what you do. You can have men who come and spend forty thousand dollars, you know, in one section. But let's be real, like it might be a guy's birthday, so that's not a consistent thing. But the guy who's gonna come every week, he wants to see, you know, he wants to see what he's coming for. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's just, it's just, it's just human nature. But now the cons that I don't, you know, which is why I don't like the nightlife at all, is that anymore. At any anymore, you know, I'm just a uh, passer by. I don't forget pass where you by. came from. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, people. Sometimes get with you because of who you are. Um, they they want to get like the recognition. Sometimes um, I don't know. With all due respect, it ten, nightlife sometimes becomes nasty at a point. Whereas like you know the whole everybody like, let's say it's ten sections out of the ten sections you've been with at least one somewhere in every section or any you know in four sections whatever you've been through of course. Who oh, has it? You, you, you're saying that you... I'm not talking about a Pacific <laughs> case. Okay, you got to get him in I'm trouble. Trying, I'm not speaking about a Pacific case. All I case. said was, have you had multiple 
That's not what you ask. Multiple you ask pros and cons. Multiple women, multiple women in different sections that you've hooked up with. And you've had them in different of sections. Course. Okay, okay. Continue. Cons. <laughs> let, let's so be that's real. a con. Let's be real. It's a con. Like, like you know, at the end of the day, let's be real. If you're really in this industry, even if I'm not in it, I still consider myself a part of it. If you're really in this industry, when you get home, you don't want to hear about the drama that happened all week. You want to hear about some shit that has nothing to do with your work in it. Facts. Especially how, how much stress and how much negativity you tend to receive as a promoter in the nightlife. Yes, it's happy, it's fun. It's some, if you see it as a customer, it looks as the best job in the world. But you deal with a lot of stuff, especially when you deal with a street crowd. Because you have to make sure that people coming in there are not going to kill each other. It's not going to... Like, that's the crowd. You're not, you're not bringing in that crowd. So there's a lot of stuff. Like, it's like, you don't want to hear about gang is the what happened, this, this, Like, no. You want to come home? Peace. Quiet. And then that also conflicts because most good, good women, and with all, all respect, I'm not saying, you know, most good women, they don't want to date a man who's going to be in a section with 10 women. Mm-hmm. Monty, do you agree? Disagree. You disagree. Can you talk a little well, bit closer on the mic? I disagree and all that is it's, what? It's what? a lot. It's you a lot. agree, disagree. I but mean, just, got, just, information. just with that last line that he, that he said, he said, most good women do not want to date a man that works in nightlife. At first, they do. They want to date the guy that every girl wants, but once they got you, that's it. You got to be the nigga yeah, thanks, that you can't be around them. You can't be around those girls no more. This kind of like the first time I was here, but um, just to backtrack on that, um, the pros and cons, I kind of agree with him, but at the same time, I don't feel like his cons were that big of a deal. Like, if I used to deal with you and I don't deal with you no more and you're in this section and this section, who cares? You old news already. I've been there, done that. Uh, like, Excuse me. Who cares? Like, mm. if anything, bring me more bitches. Okay. And okay. I feel like... Let I'm going to use you in a different way. I feel like if you have somebody that really supports you and you're a loyal man to your woman, they're not going to care if there's 10 girls around you because mm. you're going to be loyal to your women. Mm. So it all depends. If you an unloyal man, your girl is going to start questioning you because she don't found something in your phone or whatever the case may be. So I feel like if you get a woman and she's like toxic off the start and she's like, oh, why are you around this? Why are you around now? That's now her insecurities that you need to deal with. You need to be like, yo, oh, listen, man. like I'm not like that. But you got to be that man. <clears throat> and let's be honest, most male promoters, unfortunately, I'm not saying all, but most... They like to sleep around with different women. So you're saying that most male promoters are hoes. <laughs> basically, yeah, basically. But it's, but it's also about, sorry. I didn't also get to about, answer like, the second part. Like, this is a very uh, controversial co- topic mm. I'm going to make. But it's also about nightlife. Do you feel like there's a ceiling? Because if all you're going to do is keep with the same crowd, and maybe that crowd grows out, and now you can't uh, like adapt to the next crowd, then what are you doing? Are you being promoted for $300 a night? Then like a lot of people might not even want to be with you. If all you make every week is six hundred dollars, but you out every day and that, and you're like you're a promoter just because you're getting a free bottle and you're out every night. Uh, yo, not for nothing. If I could like chime right. in yeah, real quick, but your case is different as a DJ because there's no ceiling. Pass la hookah real quick. Nah, absolutely. But I, I'm not gonna lie. Like you know, predominantly, like most of my life, I dated, I dated strippers and women in nightlife. <laughs> yeah, like, I love strippers. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 I'm not gonna lie. Let's go. Literally, you have a lot of guts for that. I can't do that. But go ahead. Ninety-eight uh, percent of women that I've dated were strippers. You That's your thing. Saying? No, no, I no, not anymore. <laughs> oh, not anymore. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay, okay. You okay. get what I'm saying? But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. It's like it starts off like everything cool. Yeah. I get it. And then this it gets crazy. And, third, and then things Sorry. just start changing around because now what happens is that when you're dealing with somebody in nightlife, you understand like us in nightlife, we walk in and we gotta know how to dominate a room. So I mean, in my case, from my personal experiences, what tend to happen is that it will be a lot of tension because it's like. I'm a DJ, so I get love from all different type of people. Guys, girls, yep. girls that want to hit on me, and even the, the, the common weirdo that wants to hit on me. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> or whatever. Um, and then it will kind of start feeling like uh, competitive tension. Yep. So now when, when that woman wouldn't feel like that she's getting the attention that she's used to and stuff like that, like, things would just start changing. But also, I was the type of woman that I was going for, yeah. and you know, I started dealing. I started dealing with another woman that, like, she's a full blown entrepreneur. You get what I'm saying? She's a business owner, the whole nine. And honestly, like, she understands my lifestyle like beyond. Like, there is no like, you understand like barrier to where it's like insecurity or any of that. Like, I could kick 22 hours on a set or be gone for like two, three weeks, maybe six months. It's like it's clear. I just feel like it's a little different when you're a promoter, like, right? Because like. 
how do I, as a promoter, not hug a certain female who's bringing me a guy who's going to spend $20,000? But that's the insecurity with the woman. But it's not insecurity, because let's be real, bro. We're Hispanic. Well, I'm Hispanic, right? I gotta hug well, you and kiss you. Who, who <laughs> <not Spanish? laughs> Me. I gotta. I gotta. Honorary but, 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 but I'm, not, I don't I'm wanna, by association. I gotta hug you and I gotta give you a kiss on the cheek. But that's okay. That's, that's a greeting, that's bro. Normal. That's normal. Okay, okay, okay. But okay. So, so certain so races kiss each other in the fucking mouth. Yeah, certain races. Yeah, yeah, no. Yes. Nah, they don't do that Hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's. I don't want to say Jews, but I don't know. 10, 15 girls a night. Let's be real. We gotta put yourself in those shoes, like. You know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. I'm not saying that they don't have to. They don't deal with it. It's so, so can so I use myself a, as an a, example? Uh, for, go ahead, go ahead. Last because I didn't even get to I, get there. Go, go ahead. There's more stuff I want to talk about. So go ahead. Go I, I mean, last. I've been single and I've been taken, which I am now for four years, and I've never cheated on my girl in my life. You can laugh all you want. No, I'm not laughing. That's real nigga shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's all drink to that. Let's all drink to that. No cheat. No cheat. No cheat. No cheat. Cheers. Indian no, men no, don't no, cheat no, neither. No, Papa no, Indian. No, salud, no, salud. No, salud. No, but go ahead, continue. You were saying, even though I feel like you capped on your shot, but no, I respect that fucking that. ginger ale is disgusting. Go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. No, I'm I'm dead serious. But in the past, I've never like dated about the pros and cons thing. Um, I've messed around. I've been around the block. I know Jenny. So you a hoe? Like that. No. You was a hoe? No. Once upon a time, no. not long ago. No, no, no because because when I say, when I no when I say that I'm saying like. You know, I was single. I was talking. I wasn't like what, like one night, one night, one night. Like I'm not community dick either. You bitch, you better work for this dick. Oh, okay. Excuse like me. I have okay. standards. You feel me? So that being who I am, and just girls always being around me, that's why I am. I feel like the loyal nigga I am because I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. I know what's out there, and I know what I got. So it's like I'm not gonna fall for your little stripper bitches hoes that I used to fuck with. So you used to be hoeing then? But it took mad exactly. time. Yeah. Not no. Five months. When did you when but, did you change your life? I mean, I didn't change. I just always been loyal too. Like okay, when okay. I've been in a relationship in the past, I've been loyal too. Okay. Because so, I'm not like that. I guess my heritage and my culture. But if I want to not be with you, I'm gonna be a dog in a sense, not a hoe. But if Oh God, now we're now we're but, splitting the hairs. But, dog but if I'm with you, I'm with you, bro. Like I don't I don't care okay, about these hoes. Okay, so now let's let's And that's let's, tough because a lot of promoters can't say that let's, shit. Let's yeah. let's they can't hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, guys let's summarize this. Let's summarize this. They can't. So who agrees that there's more pros than cons in dating somebody in nightlife? Raise your hand if you think there's more pros than cons. There's definitely more pros. Okay, so you you think there's more pros? Yeah, because so everybody else thinks there's industry more cons. and industry. No, there's no more. It's, cons. it's worse to date somebody in nightlife of than course. to date somebody that's outside of nightlife. I've never experienced yes. it before. I haven't so. really experienced it either. I just like I think there's yeah. more cons. I don't. Okay. I don't know. Honestly. I would okay. see where there could be more cons. I don't okay, think so. Okay, so now I wanna I wanna move to the next question. So um, this is more for the promoters, which uh, we have three here. Uh, or at least I have two active and one that uh, has experience in that. When you guys book a DJ, what are your expectations from them? Oof, you love this kind of question. I know, you know I was going to get into it. <laughs> you know it. I love Cause this I know, question. Because I know you have, you, you have certain things that you want to say that we've had conversations about yep. that brought the whole reason why you're even here in the first place. Yep. So you want to answer first. Yep. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> when you hire, and I'll even give you a name, and I know promoters in my face who said this. When I hire Spin King, he might not be the best DJ. He might have, and I'm a be real with you. I don't, I don't care. I'm not in nightlife anymore. He plays the same fucking music every time, <laughs> except adding one or two songs. Cool. But when Spin King comes, and he respects you as a, as a promoter, he comes with at least two tables going to spend a bag. So if you spend, I don't know what his price is at this point, but let's say you spend $1,500, $2,000 $2, with him. He's going to bring people who's going to spend double that. So just off that or no, forget about the name, forget about the recognition, forget about everything. Just that alone you making your money back. Plus, if he does have a recognition, he's doing that. A lot of DJs don't even, I think it's a respect thing. Like, if I'm paying you for your services, you can't give me, and we have a great relationship, because that's another thing about it. We have a relationship of years of working with each other. You can't give me the respect to at least post my flyer once and tag, and I, I talk about it, because when it's time for me to support you, I support you with whatever you need. So that's why I, I find, like, a DJ needs to at least once, even if it's, I, the other thing is that people don't do a lot of contracts in the uptown nightlife. Downtown, the, they do contracts for even what type of music Absolutely. you're going to play. But uptown, cool. It's just word of mouth. But, bro, you expect me to pay you your price even if my party fails. No problem. 
but at least give me the, give me the respect to show me the support that I'm giving you by hiring you. If I'm hiring you it's for a reason, not because you DJ amazing. Let's be real, bro. There's ten guys who have the talent, but you may have this discipline that you built the brand. So I need you to do what you do with your brand with for me too. But if you're doing for somebody else, you don't do it for me. I feel like you disrespecting me, I and I feel like it, it, a DJ has to come with more than just oh I'm DJ and that's it, bro. You getting paid a amount of money that people who are professionals don't get paid to scratch music. It takes a lot of time into because I tried before. I can't talk shit about it, but you have to bring more to the plate. Don't tell me it's not my job. And I've also offered DJs to be like, yo, listen, I even give you a link. And if you bring people like a promoter, I'm going to give you the same thing I'm giving my promoter. And they're so lazy not even to fucking do that because they only want is a little $300 an hour. But bro, it's like, then don't, don't sit there and cry when you don't be bigger because you're not building your brand up. You just want to be the same guy who comes and gets 300 an hour. Then guess what? One day you're going to bring the other DJs that are praising you now because they was there before you, but you're not better than them. And then a year, two years later, you began paid seventy five an hour like back in the day, and they are getting now. I gotta okay. I so gotta give a round of applause to that. I, 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 he said a lot of things. Does anybody want to say anything about that? About what he said? No, nah, I mean, um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna agree with you on a portion. Like uh, right now, I started like an entertainment direction company and stuff like that. I'm still like molding it the proper way or whatever. So I'm not gonna promote it accordingly on here just yet. However, um, that's the main thing. That, like, you know, I push all my DJs. That it's really what you bring to the table. Because I can tell you right now, 100 DJs that are better than me. You get what I'm saying? But why do people choose me and my services? Even when I talk to promoters, I tell them flat out. I'll be like, listen, send me your hashtags. Send me who you want me to tag. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure that I post, depending on the demographic of the room, I'm going to post this around this time. I'm working with you. You hiring me for yep. service. You know, outside of that, you get what I'm saying? Of course, I got the talent. You know, I got the rhythm. You feel me? But the reality is, if we maneuver it like a business, I'm going to put umph into my network as well as your network. Now, this is where the cross market comes in, and this is how both of us grow. And you build and a we, bridge because now I'm a, I'm a flower. I'm going to put water on your flowers just as you put water on my yeah, flowers. Exactly. I mm -hmm. agree. I agree. Completely. Yeah. Okay. And I can I, I'm sorry, bro. I just this verse and I'm passionate about. No, I know. I absolutely. Add, I I'm very passionate about it. Too. <clears throat> Go ahead. Add, say too. what you want to like, say. Go ahead. Like all due respect to everybody. <laughs> There's a lot of DJs that like you have to even push them to speak on the mic. Or you have to tell them like, it's not my job to tell you that this song came out two weeks ago and everybody's listening to it. But I gotta tell you, please download this song right now and play it. And you question me. Bro, if I've been in this game for the same time as you or more or whatever, and I know what my crowd likes, don't tell me that you the DJ and you got you know what you're doing. Bro, yes, you do know what you're doing. But if this song is the hottest shit on earth right now, and I'm telling you this, and you know I know what I'm talking about, play it. Talk on the mic. Bro, how are you gonna sit there and think that because of a song? Which, let's be real, Uptown is limited to play trap music. And what trap music do, it makes people sometimes rowdy, but it also makes them spend money. So you got a limited time to play trap music. Cool. So you also got to have mic skills. You can't sit here, I'm paying you 300 an hour, and all you said is, hey, everybody, welcome. You don't have mic skills, so now I'm not going to hire you next time. Or I'm a, and then that's also what comes with who that DJ is. I'm, I'm hiring you because you have mic skills, too. Or then maybe tell me you're not that good at mic, and I have to get somebody to use the mic. But then, like, I, the same way I'm helping you all help me out. I think that's another thing, like, with the, sorry, and I'm all over the place, but also the music stuff, like, I get you, y'all veterans, y'all got y'all shit going on, but sometimes, like, and I, I don't even reference it, bro. When Pop Smoke came out in Brooklyn, I, I, I'm a person, like I said, I've been all over the place. I, bro, I, I give my respect to this, bro, that like, I'll go into any hood of any ethnicity, any gang, anything, and I, if I know somebody there, I know I'm good. Like, it ain't no about no street shit. Just, like, I know that the way I am with people, my personality... I got that. So I go to a lot of places. When Pop Smoke came out, I dead eyes was in his neighborhood, and that song was everywhere, bro. And I told people in my in my parties, yo, play this kid. Oh, we don't know who he is. We're going to play French from fucking Montana. Bro, play this kid. I literally had to convince the third guy. I had to pay a DJ extra to play the song. Who? I'm not going to say name. Oh, <laughs> so. About that. Hey, yo, you might have. No, no, no. Finish that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, continue. I had to pay a DJ extra <laughs> to, play a, to play the song. <laughs> To play the song, and I, I bet you this, I got out the video to this day. 1,500 dudes, 1,500 people going, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then and then fucking even he reposted it. Then the second th time that happened, because I like the thing, thing that I remember, I said Rulai. I'm in Miami for a week straight. Every club I went to, from the white clubs to the black clubs to the Spanish clubs, playing I said Rulai. The first song in a while 
that people in every ethnicity club, every type of club, is playing a Spanish song. In the in the black club, being playing a Spanish song at this level, like not the the typical sovereignty. At a white God, techno, I hate that song. At a That's white even... techno club, we play. I said, I said, yo, play. I said, I said, I said, nigga said that shit is trash. A week later, every club in their mother in the world, New York, everywhere was playing that song, and that nigga hit the fucking whatever. One hit, one of them. <laughs> at the end of the day, bro, it's like you also gotta listen to your promoters, bro. Listen to the people who the same way you earn the respect in this game. I earn the respect in the game. I know, my, I know my crowd more than you. Like, and, and even the times where I would try to book you, it's just like. In general, sometimes, I mean, I say it's free, freely. Sometimes I used to be like, you know what? If it's not broken, don't fix it. For me, I can make um, $10,000, $15,000 off of these three days that my budget for them is $600. And I'm going to go, in all the respect, at that time, I'm booking Frank for $600. And all it's going to do is make me look good on the video. But my crowd's not going to give a fuck. Because my crowd, at that moment, my crowd, all they give a fuck about is these two kids and every and the music that we're playing. And Frank is on a club level. So he playing music that niggas in the club like, but these kids don't even know about that shit yet. And so I started seeing him in the arc, like, oh, it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, what, what, I, what I do want to ask you, and, and, and you mm. got the, the promoters here, as well as, as, as Sammy, as a fellow DJ, um, you can respond if you want to, but... Um, I've noticed when we first had this conversation, uh, Gabby, about, you know, DJs and paying a DJ X amount and return on investment and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you you kind of you 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 you, you express the same sen sentiment where it was like, why would I pay a DJ more than this? If these DJs that I'll pay 600 total, they get the job done for my party. And my response to you was, well, it depends because I those two hundred dollar DJs typically, most of the time, are novices and they don't have the skill that, not only because sometimes DJs are expensive and they're not good, and they're still not good, right? So it doesn't make a difference. You say the name. But, uh, no, this is my show. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but um, it, my, my, my thing is, you also have to respect the price of a DJ. Nah, of course. I, I, and I want to commend Priscilla on this because I think Priscilla is one of the one of the promoters, the one, one of the good promoters out there that that... If I tell her, all right, this is my price, and she can pay it, she's going to be like, all right. She's not going to be like, try to wrestle me like, uh, can you do this? Can you do that? Unless if she needs help, she needs help, which is totally fine. But if my price is my price, and yeah. you're just respecting it. It's also it a is. relationship you have with the promoter. Because if either promoter been booking you for five, six years, yes. you might give him a break. Yes. So now my thing is, if a DJ tells you is, a, is there a certain price, are you trying to wrestle them down, or are you just... No, no, no. I'm just not. If if it's not my price, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna rush. I'm just not gonna book you, cause at the end of the day, like you gotta respect the price is the price. If I think you worth it, I'll give it to you. If not, it's not happening, cause I know somebody who do it to, who does the same job. Just, I, mean, just, I disagree with just that. To, you can't just say to, that. Just yeah, you just can't. To, go ahead, go ahead. You right. Go ahead. Nah, 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 my bad, my bad. I know nah, you no, hold on. Oh, he's, he's, it's coming. Damn. Nah, but but on some real shit. This is this is the thing though. When you hiring us, you hiring our brand. You hiring what we could do. Like, you understand? Frank Rolf, I'm not going to lie, he's one of my favorite DJs. Why? Because he's an entertainer. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and it's the same thing. Like, we put on a show. Yeah, but a key word I use was worth. I think Frank Rolf is worth it. I think you worth it. But I remember going back to the conversation where some people who don't, who don't no, use no, their right, brand, right. they just come and, and play music. Nah, yeah, just because a DJ you know hopped saying? on a bus and went to the next city, like, yeah. you'd be crazy to give them yeah. whatever they asked for. You understand? But it's like... But you you got to know, like, so what demographic you bring in, like, the DJ. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if you bring in, like, a talent, like, for example, like, Frank, or, like, myself, I'm in many different networks. I hop in and out of networks or whatever. That's why it's, like, I know a lot of people, but it's, like, you wouldn't know to the extent of who I know unless you actually mention my name. You get what I'm saying? But when it comes down to it, there's a lot that comes to the table when it comes to that. Not only are you getting, you understand, a full-on show, you understand what I'm saying? You're getting our networks, our following. <clears throat> and, you know, you guys as a promoter as well, you know, we understand that you guys build your foundations and shit like that. But the reality is, is that, like, if you're hiring a good talent, make sure that you promote it accordingly as well so that we can promote. I've noticed I I've noticed that, and Monty, you're going you're gonna to answer right after this because I, I, I just have to say this. I've noticed <laughs> that when certain DJs are on the, on the, on the card... Promoters tend to go harder. Why not promote your party the same exact way for every <clears throat> single body? That's a big thing. Do you yes. agree with that, Sam? Absolutely. Priscilla? Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, no. Okay. But we're gonna but we're gonna get to Monty. Monty. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go to we're gonna <laughs> go to right. Monty. So just to backtrack on everything he said, <laughs> the reason why I don't indulge in the three hundred dollar DJs is because not saying that they don't know what they're doing, but they're the cop carbon copy of the Frank Thank Rose. You. They're the carbon oh copy of God. the big ticket Camillo. They copying Pereira. They copying Spin King. They copying Cass and the Dembo song that he did. And this and that. They copying Simon Blank being the female DJ that started the the that type of wave. You know what I'm saying? All due respect to her, you know who she is. You know what I'm saying? So you're not paying just because he could play with Frank Groff could play, bro. No, I understand. It's but blood, man, they... sweat, tears into this game. That they are where they are. And I'm not a fan of big budgets, but they starting to call me Big Budget Monty out here. Because mm, I do Frank Roth and Spin King the same night. I got Camillo and Spin King this Saturday at Coco La Reeve. I got Pereira I and Coto King. Venue. I got Pereira me, and Coto King go. from Providence bringing him down at Viva Toro on Friday. Like, I am Big Budget him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do that. And it's crazy because they make more money than me sometimes. But... I've done that right. because I've been there when it was the little, but, little niggas, and I've that. done that when it's the newcomers and the OGs, and now I'm here for the for the Sammy Blenzes, right. the the Just Wins. Shout out to DJ Just Win. Just Win for the win, my DJ. I'm here for that, and I'm here for the newcomers as well, but they got to earn that shit, bro. I'm not pu oh, putting you at a mid-set or a closing set just because you could play what Frank Roth could play. But remember, at the end of the day, all these DJs... That are big now, or one day the same copies you're speaking about? Yeah, but they the ones that started the fucking wave. They're all carbon copies of these niggas here. They set the wave here, bro. Like they started that. Like I, the cups, the this, the that. Like shout us to Camilo. Like the like the brands, the shirts, the the flags, the fl the floats. Yeah, like you all that is dumb. You have a point. Yes, that's all them. Bro, bro, remember, bro. Without them, they I'm wouldn't do that idea. Generation. I'm coming from the generation. Try to that, talk straight into the. Mic. I'm coming from the generation that that got their backs turned on by a lot of these big guys. That you know, you had to come back down to us to in order to know what was cool. Nah, there's always a place for you those DJs. That, that, that so remember that. That's yes. why it's, it's 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 a general conversation around where it's like, oh, the the youngins don't respect the older guys because a lot of the older guys shitted on us, and then y'all had to come back down to us. To I mean, learn. I think now that's tick, in your you situation were, yeah, overall in nightlife, though. Like, if you're a great promoter and a marketing expert, you know that you got to follow that new wave. You know you got to get that new girl in town. You know you got to get Frank Roth with the elephant in the room. You know you got to move that way. But you're not going to forget, and I'm somebody that's from Queens and Brooklyn, but you're not going to forget uh, Lilo in Uptown. You're not going to forget Dito. You're not going to forget Los New Jersey. Like, you, you, you know what they trying to do. But you got to have Camilo there. You got to have Frank there. You got to have these dudes here because they're the ones holding that brand and that club and that crowd together. And this goes back to my my skit. Like, opening, mid and closing is completely different. You can't just put somebody at the opening because he's fucking $200, $300, or a closing because he's two $300. You're going to get $300 worth of shit. You know what? And I feel mm. like that's mainly within, like, the... The hip hop and the Latino community, like, cause I work a lot yes. of like corporate stuff. I work a lot of like, you know, like I, I'm, you know, before, you know, I got into some trouble or whatever. I went down and now I came back out and I revamped my brand entirely. So I got locked up in my prime. And even while I was in my prime, I have 32 states under my belt and I have a lot of experience. And in a lot, like I said, of different networks that is not the yeah. industry stuff or anything like that. And the way that the industry, like outside of like what we see in New York, this is they why pay I'm such really a big, good. <laughs> this is why I'm such a big advocate in the culture right now, and I've literally made it like my life's work to really bring back the culture of DJing because it got lost with so much of this fabrication That's bullshit for the DJs. Because at the end of the day, we really are artists. Like you get what I'm saying, and we get respect in a lot of other places. Us that actually put in the work, the yep. blood, sweat, and tears, and actually get the opportunity to actually perform. Yo, I, let me tell you something. I love being out of town, and it's sad to even say because I love my city so much. I love being out of town, not because they scream and cheer because I'm from New York City, but because why? Because I could be set up with two turntables and I could put on a fucking show because I don't have to play the same ten records. Yep. You get what I'm saying? There's so much more out there. I, and, I, I agree. Um, I, I just want to pass the mic to, to Pr Priscilla. Is, you, is there anything you want to say about this? <laughs> For sure. Um, I feel like um, a lot of what being a great DJ is, too, is having 
and I actually posted about this today, about having everything in a file. Like, for example, when I book you, you send me a link, and I go in, I get your latest pictures, I get your promo for the big screen, um, you know, I get your logo on there, and it's good quality because when I go and I send that link to my flyer guy, he's going to have the best quality. You should the, preach that. To and these, the to problems with DJs so nowadays, DJs. and I'm going to say it because I'm sick of it. And preach I'm not it, teach it. And I'm not, booking, oh I'm not booking DJs no more. I literally said it today. I'm not booking DJs no more. If you cannot go and get a, a photo shoot every three to four months, like you, this is your brand. Don't you want to do better? Don't you want to grow? Don't you want to, you know, network the right way and do things the right way? And at the end of the day, don't you want to become a bigger DJ? Don't you want to charge more? I have DJs that are charging more, but they still have a year or two yep. old pictures, sometimes even three or four years old pictures. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. I I'm not nasty flyers. I'm not supporting that no more. And the fact that I get it <laughs> texted to me or you IG me the, the the picture and then I go to send it to my And guy he's like, and this is a low quality. It's low yeah. quality. And you don't I'm believe not, in your brand enough. And, and, and that's the thing is I feel like a lot of upcoming DJs right now are not realizing that. And sometimes, you know, I even get people going, oh, well, you know, I don't have the money to do it. I'm like, yo, I got the setup on my house. You trying to come to my house? I've literally offered a, in, in right now three DJs. Ooh. I'm not going to say. Oh, there Shut. it goes. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> I got him. I'm about to say, right. the DJs get invited to the house. Have you, have you, have you guys <laughs> ever dealt with that as, as promoters, like DJs that send y'all? Listen, are you man. Are going to say names to who? I'll but say the names. Say names of what? Of the, of, of the right DJs that, that send I you? I wouldn't because I feel like there's a chance for people to grow. And as a promoter, if you have more time in this game and you can push... DJs to be their best self, why not? Now, if they don't want to take your advice, then you're just going to be another DJ that fell off. I think they're just comfortable. I think they're so comfortable. That's why I'm not that booking them come no more. To do, <laughs> they just come to do a job. And they come to do a job and that's it. That their name itself rings bells. No, but What's worse why. than that, bro, is they have the Cuban links and the chains on in their photo sh shoots and then they come to the club with no chains, no watch, no nothing. That to me is even worse. Well, don't try personal wait, wait, thing, wait, 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 that's, Listen, that's, listen. That's some, don't, don't, I can't don't, no, that's, some people no. Got props in, in no, that's, that's even worse, bro. Don't try to no, put on an image you, no, that no, you no, not no, showing me when you walk in the club, bro. I don't agree with that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do, do it. Here's my counter, Monty. I'm sorry. Here's my counter to that. Don't do it. To the upcoming DJ, don't do you it. need to look like money so yep. people can invest in you. Sure. Whether they invest, hold on, whether they invest time in you, whether they want to book you, you have to look like money. And also, also, you cannot forget the fact that DJs are getting robbed left and right. Oh, they are so then that's more of a reason not to put the Cuban but, link but, on but, in your fucking photo shoot. <laughs> but, but you don't hey, look at them. Talking you about. don't look at them. But that, the the problem is. Would you what? put a DJ? I'm sorry. Would you put a DJ on a fly with just a black T-shirt and a with a, with, with, with a South Pole hoodie? Right. Obviously I not mean, a South Pole oh, hoodie. Oh. So he, but what I'm has, saying is he, he can't has. have ten Cuban links Monty, on. What do you have? Because I know some DJs you book that that's all they have. Oh. Yeah, you got a drink. A black, yes. a drink. A black tea? All right, uh, I got my flyers from now till spot. August. Not even a we could with look a hat right on. now. Oh, you know who I'm talking about. A black tea? We could go through a my photos right now. And a, and, a, and a regular hat. A black nasty. <laughs> a black nasty. <laughs> a black nasty. Without the logo? With hey. the logo. Ah. All that. Oh, my God. Not right, me. All right. Could but never wait. be me. But These things I do like this. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. Like, I don't want to make this. I don't never make be this, me. I don't wait. I don't want to make this about. I don't, don't want to make this. I don't want to make this about DJ poses. What I, what I, all I, what I'm trying to say. It can look like money is without that, without the f ten Cuban links, bro. There's way you you think there's ways. Yes, to do that. without the ten Cuban links. Okay, okay. I feel like or six. How you move in this industry? Yes. I feel like if you build, the biggest thing is building good connections with the promoters. The promoters are literally yeah. will make the party. <laughs> He don't like that. Don't you like can that. look. Can't like, you like that. you can't. can't you can't. You can look like money, Wait but you second. can't reach. Let bro. me rephrase time that. Time out. Time out. Time out. Let, let her. Let her talk. So. We, we do make the party, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but. He's going to say, if I pull my laptop out, is but, there going to be music? But, no, there's not. Course, no, I didn't even say anything. No, I'm saying, like, you can DJs say that. that Hold bring, on, let's speak. Of course, the DJs that you bring are a key element to making a great party. So we're going to give you your flowers. But obviously, there's some big DJs that come in and, like, 
we said, sometimes they'll bring sometimes a table or two, but sometimes they bring nothing. But we're booking you for your talent. But at the end of the day, that crowd is ours. Unless you tell me, yo, my people pulled up, I'll be like, yo, thank you. Like, and I really appreciate don't that. Do wait, wait, nope. can I ask? Okay, okay, can well, wait, let's but wait. I don't mind. You don't have to bring Can I, can I say something? Party. Can like, I say something? But if you do it, you gotta get the DJs, you gotta get the But if you do, I appreciate it. No, no, I respect, listen, I respect promoters. Like, like you get what I'm saying? I really love y'all hustle, y'all grind for real. But the reality is, right? Without the music, what, what do you got? Food and alcohol. Play, I'm hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it's a real question. I got one for you. <laughs> for all for all the spots that you go to, what what people come for? The the chicken wings, the hookah, or the drink? Where <laughs> you wings. could get, like you get what I'm saying? Everywhere else, what else do you have to offer besides the Papa ambience? Indio? Yo estoy aquí. They come for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, bro. They come because I'm there. Shit, if the music work. shit. It will never be shit, shit at my party. <laughs> I no, spent too I'm much saying, money I'm on saying, DJs. I'm saying, <laughs> if it. Granted, that's now, but I'm no, just even saying, back if, then. You, if you had the ignorant mentality, you get what I'm saying? That it was kind of like, nah, you feel me? I'll bring whoever it is. I'm going to just play. Nah, I would never bop, do bop, that. But, that. but I ain't talking to you specifically. It's I mean, but, I, but, but I've wait, 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 let her, let her, let, let, he let her finish. So let, raw, Sammy, let Sammy finish. So, so the raw reality is, you get what I'm saying? Is that if the ambiance, you don't set it up accordingly with knowing what talent to bring. You get what I'm saying? The talent plays a huge factor no, because there's food and alcohol everywhere, bro. Okay, so now who wants to respond to that? I mean, I'm not everywhere, though. No, he's not talking about... No, everywhere. I know, I know, but I'm going back to what she said. Like, of course, they're there because of the promoter. They're there because of the girl waitressing. They might be there because the lights in the club are fire. Yeah, everybody come the, the location is key. Yes, so, but they also come because of us, bro. Well, obviously... You want to know how much, <laughs> how much a promote. promoter influences that... That it's a big deal. You could get a great contract out of the fucking place that just opened up today but because you... they need the promoters. If not, they would say, fuck the promoters. Let's go straight to the DJ. Make less, make more money because we don't have to give nobody a cut or give the DJ the cut because they don't need a promoter. But you know what's crazy? There's a lot of DJ promoters today, bro, and they do that. But wait, but wait, but wait. But wait, DJ wait, promoters, let's... they throw their own parties, bro. That's but, what I'm saying. But they throw their own parties. But and then on, they keep on, the on, DJ on. budget, too. Hold on, hold on. We're not going to talk on, about wait, those wait, niggas. Wait, 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 DJ wait, promoters wait, wait. get me tight. Wait, 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 wait. Cause I got, I got they so double many. Dipping. I got so many questions. I got so many questions for you guys. Yeah, that's double and dip. We're we're barely even hitting the surface now. So now, my uh my next question for you guys is: we gotta speed it up. What qualities do you guys feel like? If you had to name two qualities, would you say are required for somebody to be successful in nightlife? Let's start with Sammy. Two, two qualities, qualities for people to be successful in nightlife. Um. I would say two major qualities is, again, boiling back to learning the DJ business. Well, on my end, I'm a DJ. So As I a DJ, okay. What, you get what I'm saying? For I can't really speak DJ, on yes. a promoter. You get what okay. I'm saying? Definitely, like, focusing on the business, you get what I'm saying, and being open-minded to different networks. Like, you just got to be open-minded and about the business because the talent and everything that you do, that's the groundwork that you play out. You get what I'm saying? So it kind of... Correlates together in a sense. Mm. Okay. Two Probably. great qualities so of being successful. Be you, successful. Could talk, you could talk about promoter, like two two qualities that you need to have in order to be a successful promoter. All right. Number one, which everybody knows that's around me about me, is organization. That's like major. Cause that goes from having staff on time, that goes from having DJs on time, that goes from booking DJs, that goes to flyers being on time, that goes to party being on time, you being on Organization is number one. You got to be organized. Number two, honestly, I would say your personality. Because people want to be around you because of who you are and how you act and how you move and how you behave and how... Because you are the company you keep. So the people around me should kind of, you know, reflect off of how I am and the people that's there. If I'm a street nigga, not for nothing, I'm going to have street niggas at my parties, which is why it gets a little complicated and it gets a little messy. But if you are cool, humble, funny, personality guy, this, that, that's what you're going to be around. And that's the type of females that are going to be around you. You're not going to pick up Shaniqua from fucking Brownsville that lives at the 40s in Jamaica Ave. You're going to be around... Queens, Williams, yeah. like, you know, whatever your atmosphere right. is. So I feel like it's your organization and your personality of who you are as a person. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, Priscilla? Uh, I have three. Can I, like, get an extra? Just go ahead. Be quick. <laughs> Damn, right. I would have added another so one. I feel Matter of like... fact, nope, two. Let's all be fair. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> My full game. If you want one, then you got to take a shot. 
Okay, I'll take a shot. Hey, there you go. Does she have shot in her cup? Uh, I'll, she... I'll pour it. She I'll spilled it, it on Sammy already. <laughs> I'll pour it because I feel like it's very important. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Sheesh. Do I take it first? No, after. Okay, right. so I feel like one, to be humble. You have to be humble in this industry. Two, discipline, which, you know, kind of goes with the organization part and all of that. Three, you must have a loyal team around you because there is room for everybody to eat at your table. But you really need to build that that team that's going to help you get to the next level. At the end of the day, everybody should be moving with you accordingly. Um, so I feel like that's very, very important because right now I have a really good established loyal team. We don't uh, compete against each other. Like we make sure like, yo, I'm trying to do this event. Like, All right, how could we go to your event and support you? Like you're trying to make up the bag this day? Cool, we're all going to come pop out and, you know, pop 20 bottles. Like for you. You know, right. so I feel like as long as you make sure everybody's eating on your team, that that's very key as a promoter. You know, like you can say you could do this by yourself and it's great if you can, but why not have people around you and why not help your, your gang make money right. with you, you know? So okay. I feel like that's very important. So that was what that was two, right? Three. That she got to take a shot. I got three. Supposed to be three, but she only said two. That's what I'm saying. She said three. She said, three. She said, three. She said humble. Oh, she said humble, discipline, humble, discipline and, and have a good team. Okay. And, and, and loyal team. team. Loyal team. Loyal. Gabby. Um, I'm going to add on to that one, basically, but is one is know your value, but also remain humble. Because sometimes when you're in that space where everybody wants to be around you, you start letting your ego control you. And at the end of the day, this is all about personality. So if your personality starts to like be trash because you think you're that person, then you have no room for, to grow. Mm -hmm. And then um, the second one would be for me something that I've learned, especially now that I'm, I'm you know, in business in general, is unity. Uh, especially in New York City, we're not united, and you have like the top promoters in the city that if they were to unite, they probably own four or five clubs. And I and I'm not gonna name names out of respect, and I won't. But um, unity. I didn't ask you to, but no, 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 no. I'm taking a shot. <laughs> but it's unity, cause like I realized looking back, if all those people that were like the top stars or rising stars in that moment would have all just instead of bickering and, and arguing and all this stuff, would have came together, who knows where we'd be today. You know, maybe we would have broken ceilings and made Uptown different. But now the new generation is tr pretty much customers turned clients. So, you know, all they care about is, is, you know, is getting that bottle for free and having fun with their friends. You don't really see a lot of driven people, you know, in the nightlife, at least in Uptown, except for like probably two or three people right now. If you really study it, it's not really. It's pretty much the old guys still in control. And they keep pushing and they keep bringing on a couple of people. kind of the same so, thing. So, 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 so humi humility... And unity yes. are the two things that you feel like they need to have. So it's important. The reason I ask is because anybody watching this, you know, they, they get a lot of gems from this. And all of you guys are experienced in your fields. And um, just to go really, uh, just to go back really quick as far as like who makes the party, who makes the party. I'll give my final thought on that. And then I'll get to the next question. Um, I think there's no particular, it's not the promoter, it's not the DJ, it's not the owner, it's not the bottle girls, it's not the juquero, it's all of us together. Of yeah, course. for sure. Not one person more important than the other. Because with no promoters, you don't have any people. With no DJ, you don't have music. You know what I mean? With no owner, you don't have a venue. So everybody brings something in there. But anyway, so we, we've been talking a lot about Uptown. And one interesting thing, and I also think that this applies to, to Queens in a way, but mostly Uptown, New York City, which is the Bronx, Dykeman, Harlem, Wash Heights. Um... I feel like it takes a certain type of DJ to be able to DJ in Uptown New York City. Like that everywhere. Do you guys know? Uh, that's not true. Uptown, yeah. Uptown is a different beast. Uptown, and I'm going to say come from Uptown. By the way, I've promoted in Uptown for know, four, know, five, six, seven, eight years as well. Damn, just say eight years. Yeah, but four, I'm, no, I'm saying because it was different times. <laughs> okay. but I, yeah, but I've about, done Playroom. I've done Vodka. I've done all that. Monaco. Right, we're talking about times where like, Talking about right now, like like where a seventeen year old got enough money to spend, like as, as the dope dealers that was 25, 30 years old at that time. Right now, you know it got it takes a lot to up to because the, unfortunately, I'm please so, can can you explain it to somebody that doesn't understand Uptown yeah. New York City? Yeah, I'm gonna say and is trying to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Uptown is is special because it's like it's similar to Queens. It's all these ethnicities that come together, but it's it's really driven by the Dominican. A population that is specifically in that area, and you know you have, 
unfortunately, I love my where I'm from, but we all know this that we're kind of like in this box sometimes in Uptown, where it's like the same. Like if you go into the same venues for the same promoters or the same friends, the same music. So it kind of puts the DJ in a box sometimes, and it's also like this, like unfortunately, where people feel like certain things are corny. So you come from Queens with a certain style, we might think you're corny, and we're we're, we're really not gonna respect you. Because it's a certain street culture and a certain thing that is like, if you're not from there, you're not going to get. And that's different because you could go to Queens, you go to Brooklyn, you can go to Manhattan and DJ and do whatever, and people will still have love and respect for you. But I just feel like Uptown has that certain thing where it's like, like the dope dealer and the scammer drives the club. And if they think you corny, they're not fucking with you. If they think, so when it comes to like, the, you were saying like the personality stuff, a lot of spots right now that have those humble nice promoters what nobody broke? goes to <laughs> i guarantee you that right now i could give you the names of the venues and the djs and the, and the, and the promoters look, that everybody goes to but opus is still opus nah, it opus, don't matter if frank roth is there well, opus will not hire or a corny nigga it, that's what that's what i was Har- gonna say opus will not hire promoter as corny when the higher or that they girl, feel is corny they feel like no nah, i'm sorry that they feel is corny they but what makes you think that'll happen in Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long I've Island? Seen it, bro. I I've disagree, seen it bro. At the biggest clubs. Listen, in Queens. not one promoter can go into Viva Toro today and get a night. I'm the only promoter in that no, venue. No, but well, I'm sorry. We're not speaking about that. That's we're, contract we're, holding. We're, we can we're, talk about that. We're That's what I'm saying. We're specifically talking about Uptown. Yeah, but New I'm York trying City. to backtrack where he said if he feels like Uptown is different. Bro, in that I'll case. give you the perfect example. That's I'm not going to say the name. We all know what it is. Out of respect for the person that I have a relationship with who had. Dealings in that place, I love you and respect you. But that there was a per- certain place in our area that did not, like other places, did not succeed. Even though those people had an amazing track record before that, because they wanted to change uptown, they wanted to bring a high class type of event, where it'd be high class music. What I mean is like less hip hop, less streets. You couldn't stand on couches. The certain people wouldn't be allowed in. Yeah, you could spend forty thousand dollars tonight, but we know you rowdy. But the reason we why know, they did but, that but was me, because they wanted to filter out succeed. the street. Uh-huh. It didn't succeed. But the same people behind that succeeded in other places and other, other boroughs with the same style. It just Uptown does not allow you that. Unfortunately, bro, I guarantee I could I could literally take you to places where they're empty. No matter if even the promoter is the top promoter in the city at the moment, because they're just not fucking with the DJ. It's it's little stuff like that. Where it's like, I'm not going there. Nobody's yeah, there, I ain't going like, there. Uh, Uptown is like a popularity contest. Yeah, it's too much of that. In a sense, but also you got you gotta you gotta know the culture, like when when you're going over there, because there's a lot of underground music that gets played over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be in tune with and the whole nine. Like Uptown won't hear they shit. Yeah. That's that's what it is. It's the and, and we main Latin trap what it is today. Yeah. And we're the reasons, we're the reasons, and I include myself in that because I was the pe- I was one of those people who hired the, the people Same here. who are there today. Yeah, we made we made Latin trap what it is today. If it wasn't for Messia, Tal, Lito Quirino, if it wasn't for Yaga Yai, who is behind, yeah. who is an OG, years of work in the Latin trap scene, if it wasn't for those people, today I think the Latin American music wouldn't be where it is. Even though that it may not be what catapulted, it may not be where it where it is popping right now. Like, bro, that gave us them both. Dembo, yep. right now, and I say this because I'm a person who has businesses in DR. I'm a person who's literally going to DR next week. I go to DR every two months. I'm going to live there one day. Like, I, I believe DR is the bridge to New York more than anything in the world. And if you have New York, you control the world. If you really know how to move New York. If you can make it here, you can and make it anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> Dembo, everybody, Spanish, the Spaniard artists want Dembo. The American artists want Dembo. The, La- the Puerto Rican artists want Dembo. Everybody wants Dembo. Right now... Dembo is a la cuna del Dembo. DR is the cuna right now of, of everything that's moving the world. And where does it get played the most? Where, does it, where is it pushed the most? Uptown. So if you don't know that the Dembo La 42 was hot and not El Alfa's popular... Because if you look at the numbers, El Alfa is what should be hot in the, in the club. Because El Alfa's was hot in the international world. But what's that's hot right now? The Lo 42 music. Yep. And then not every DJ can know that. And not every DJ could come and be like, okay, let me go study and see who's hot in the fucking middle of nowhere in DR in this fucking little town that nobody knows about. Not every DJ, that's why not every DJ is worth and, their and, money. And, I, and, I, and I'll add to this real quick because what I, what I will say is if I play 42, which is a style of them both for the people that don't know, if I play 42 in Houston, they're not rocking to it. 
No, they don't know, know what it is. All no. they know is El Alfa. Mm-hmm. So like I have to play El Alfa's I mean, biggest you gotta, tracks. You gotta play to the crowd that it, you're it, presenting. It, exactly. So it, I I agree that that it's a culture hub. Mm-hmm. But I feel it, like the DJs out there know what to play. If you don't, you sh- what the fuck are you yeah, doing so that, over there? No, but it, it you see that's the thing that that's like, what, that's what he was trying to say that it's. Not you should know what to play, but that doesn't mean that every DJ knows exactly what to play over. So then he don't get his gotta, ass booked. You gotta really he know like how to hit it. Yeah, too. he or she like, don't get booked then. So it, it, <laughs> it, it, and it, and it's tough. I, I think, uh, to be honest with you, in, in my career, Uptown New York City is the toughest crowd that I've ever had to deal with. And he's seen it first hand. And I've seen it first hand too. Hands down. Now, uh, I, I, I could I could DJ in Jersey. I could kill him, and I don't even have to play one of them both. But if I go uptown New York City and I don't play them bow and I don't play trap, I don't exist. Or the drill scene. Yeah, like any any right, kind of that, that like, shit is coming up. You know crazy, what I mean? Man. So I just it, it's just interesting getting people's perspectives about uptown. I, I, from somebody that that that's based in Jersey, do you have anything to add to that? Like from what you see? There, but I feel like that's a challenge and that's good for DJs, like to study where they're gonna go and make sure that they're playing what. The people want over there like if anything hey like oh this venue cool i'm getting booked there yo who's your resident dj i want to talk to him real quick take that the take research that, take that hour talk and be like yo my guy i'm coming over here obviously i'm i'm a great dj but what are your people like because you're there every single Facts. weekend and i feel like if um for example you're somebody that i know will like go and do the studies before you go somewhere but not all DJs think like that. That goes back to ego, about the ego stuff. Like, and that goes back to pricing. Being humble. Right? Yeah, because, all right, absolutely. I'm pretty sure there's certain DJs that you that, that you book that you know either they do they research the party, they look up the club like, yo, this is what they like over there. Oh, okay, this I know what to do once I touch down. And there's other people that have no idea what to do once they like. And that's you why know? you guys get paid more. Hey, no, nah, so, but yeah, hey. no, nah, but it's true though. In all reality, even even like traveling anywhere that you travel, you gotta study the room. Yes, you get in tune with the promoter. You get in tune with the people that work there. Like I know, even when I like I just I just came back from Baltimore, DC, and all that. You know, it's been a while since I've been down there. What did I do? I hit up some people from around the area. Yo, what's up? Some DJs that I know. I hit up the promoters. Yo, yeah. send me some of the gems that y'all got out there. Yo, let me know what the vibe is. That's bye, dope. Bye, bye. You know, you get what I'm saying. You gotta study the rooms that you're going. That, that's facts. Now, I wanna I wanna ask the promoters this this question: mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you guys ever kicked a DJ off the set? <laughs> well, not well. Put yes. your hand up if you de- if you kicked the DJ off the set before. Okay, so you've done it. Yep, Halloween so, 2022. <laughs> he gave us the date. All Little right. King. All right, all right. I'm not oh. taking a fucking shot. Oh. Oh man, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The one that brings the show? <laughs> Damn, I need my camera. The man. fuck? Is that the one? He has like a mask? The like one that mask? copied everybody else with the mask? Yeah. He wears like the spiky mask, right? Yeah. Oh my God. All right, all right. Time I was down. You, you were saying, Monty. Yes, I've taken a DJ off the set before. Literally, all right, let, let's be very clear. <laughs> Because <laughs> I got my drink, I got my drink in my two step. Hold on. So we all got a drink. Let's, let's, let's be very clear. You, while the DJ was in the middle of the party, you took that DJ off the set. Well, I didn't unplug the laptop. I would hope not. I'm gonna tell you, I should have unplugged that shit. <laughs> oh, but I didn't do it. But you didn't. No, but that, that was that's that's semi nice of you. Yeah, it was Halloween, and you know I had a situation. I was offered a show, and the show didn't meet its criteria, which we agreed on what was a part of the show. It's fucking Halloween. If you tell me you're going to, let's just say you told me you was bringing a fucking elephant. If I see- People better ask ask me for that. If I see see you didn't bring the elephant, you didn't meet your part of your package. You didn't bring the elephant for me on Halloween. You're at fault. If we discussed it and we agreed that you were supposed to bring me a fucking elephant, where's the fucking elephant? So- that was one red flag. Then the second red flag is you can't read the crowd. Like, you see the crowd is not pumping and jumping to whatever you're playing. Why are you playing that? It's 1.30. What, what are you doing? It's Halloween. Everybody's dressed up. Like, for girls, it's like an excuse to be a slut, right? That's the oh. saying. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what Mean Girls said, the movie. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I like that movie. Like, I love that movie. So I'm like... Bro, like, what's going on here? Mind you, the dude's set was an hour and 10 minutes. 
Hour and ten. Hour and fifteen, something like that. Cause that's, we was gonna that's we, how odd Yeah, it's weird yeah. because I had like a DJ doing like a 30 minute, 20 minute gap okay. until the closer came. Okay. So two to two thirty was a little empty. Okay. He got on at one one o'clock. He was off by one thirty six. That's bad. So I text my group chat with all my promoters. Wait, he was supposed to be on the set at one. He got that one to two. One to two. He, he got, got at done at one thirty six. Oh, he stopped. Like I took him off at one thirty six. <laughs> How you took him off? What you said? You put another DJ. So on? I put in the group chat and I said, "Yo, bro." And the other promoters were complaining. Well, you a didn't little tell bit. him like, "Yo, change the music, my G." Bro, yeah, like, I you said gotta... two of my boys up there. No, uh, you see, no, 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 no now I come back and it's 1.30 and I'm looking at my group chat and I'm looking at the crowd. I'm looking at what's going on and everybody's like, yo, bro, what's going on? I said, bro, this nigga shit in the bed. Do me a favor, DJ Beep. You're here? Yes, I'm here. Are you ready? Yo, but my set's at two. Yo, go to the DJ booth right now and take this nigga off the set, bro. See, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. You handle your business. But then, but he was a partner that night. The DJ. Uh, that's yeah. A little yeah, like if somebody's so a party. It's his party yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Muddy the waters. Yeah. You it's his party too. So he's seeing the vibes right. as a good DJ. And he's like, dude, I, he said thank you because I, I didn't know if I could violate or not. And I'm not the one that booked yeah. the DJ to begin with, but but he, he knows me. I'm, I've been in the industry. I said, yo, bro, go over there. If you want, tell him. Monty said, I'm getting on the set now. Can I ask you a question though? Because like he wear a mask, right? Uh huh. He wear a mask, oh, so shit. like you couldn't see like the the, <laughs> now they know the who facial. It is. It's a DJ that wears a mask. It's a DJ that wears a mask. It's like a hundred of them, so yeah. you couldn't see the facial right, cool, expression. Cool, cool. Show like the neck, the way that it turned. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> like what happened? All right, but, so but, so I I watched it happen. Did you pay him? Is the question, <laughs> bro? I paid him to get the fuck off. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my I'm giving you goodness. your full bread. I give you that. I, I'm I giving you your full you bread. You wouldn't pay. That's my stuff. Yo, bro, I don't do that. That's not right. That's not right. I'll tell you like if this is your price. If this I'm at what that you charge me that and you didn't show up, that's cool. <laughs> no, but hold on, but hold on. I respect and you that, Monty. Wait, wait, wait. over Ma here again. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, understood. I respect that. No, let me tell you how yeah. I showed yeah. you 30 minutes. But back then, I'll be like, you work 30 minutes? All right, here's half the money I was supposed to give No. No. No, bro. Take a shot. Take a shot. No, bro. You booked the nigga. You agreed to that price. Pay that nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, thank you. But you're never DJ for me again. The price I am today, yeah. The price I was done. I'll be like, all right, nigga, find me. All right, take, oh my. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah, you can nasty. say that. Take, I never, take a shot for I, that. Hey, hey, I always pay my, my DJs. They're not DJs. You just counted, you just said that. You, you said, said, you said you would that clip them. To me. You, was you just said back in the day. You would clip them back in the day. If, if I, the person I was then, how Yeah, but you've done it before. No, bro. I said the person I was then. Oh, yeah, well, you done it. Happened to me. I would have been like, "Fuck no." He right, for that price. confusion, Hell yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay. should take yeah, a shot. Nah, because... I but wait, never had that let me happen, finish. Let God. me finish. I had late DJs. So he went up there and he said, "Yo, Monty said I'm getting oh. on the set now. Thank you. We good. We stop, getting on." Stop, Sorry, mic. thank you. And I'm just gonna throw it out there a little more because I don't want to take the mic too long. And the DJ had the fucking audacity to DM me. A different day after I unfollow him, like, yo, what's up, my bro? What's going on? And I said, bro, respectfully, you disrespected me that night. You not <laughs> worth the money that night. I gave you your bread. Don't look for me, bro. Sammy! Yo! <laughs> I love it. Follow DJ, follow DJ. <laughs> bro, and, 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 and it was like a little back and forth, and I was just like, yo, respectfully, take it how you want, man. Hey. I kind of heard that, that, that the show is amazing, but like the show part of it, if the show is there. That was but even like, bad. The, the DJ part of it is like, ah. Eh. Okay, the DJ part okay. of it is terrible. <laughs> like, for that, I just hired. That's what, you know what's crazy? Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I respect that's it. That's why you see a lot of venues, they copied, the, well, whatever, whatever. They took the show. They started just hiring people to do that shit. But yeah, I because that's entertainment. And, but you see, Which I is see, a big part I, of nightlife today. And, but that, that, I feel like that's happened, period, like, Way even before. Yeah, yeah, we used to do that back in the exactly. days. Exactly. So it's it's been done before. But the anyways, balloons, so you've never sparkles. had to kick anybody out the set? I have. Or haven't, cut them short, right? <laughs> um, but I've respectively have gone up and been like, yo, um, I need you to play something different. Like you're not yeah, reading the course. crowd, right? Because I'm gonna it doesn't matter who you are, if you're 
you're not doing it for me or my crowd, I'm going to say something because it's affecting my crowd. And if I know the bottle poppers are about to leave because of you, then I got to go say something to you, whether it's me or I tell my partners just because what you were saying, you're so busy as a promoter. I don't think people realize that you have a million people like just like messaging you. Yep. And then not only that, there's something's, something's going on with the staff. Extreme. Something's going on with managers. Something's going on with the bar. Out of nowhere, we ran out of 42s. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Like It's so much going on. And then, you know, sometimes we try to enjoy the party as promoters, but you're literally like on your phone, like texting and texting. People sometimes, like my own friends will be like, yo, Pri, like get off <laughs> your you phone. Off. <laughs> That's like, why I quit. Enjoy, enjoy the party. I'm like, yo, I can't. At the end of the day, my customers and my clientele are the most important thing to me. As long as y'all having happy, uh, uh, having like a good time. Like at the end of the day, like if I'm not having a good time, I don't care. Like it's, you guys are what's bringing the money into the bank, and, and and I agree with that because it does, I don't care for promoters. These new promoters have fun pro, though. No, these new promoters they got no okay, kid that, in the that, world. That, that's that's a little bit different. Well, the but, what I, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> as a promoter, you're not there to have fun. You're there to work. Yeah, yeah right. we're working. You know what I mean? You're and not... and perhaps fun is a byproduct. If things are going smoothly, we don't have that's fun great. No more, bro. You don't if have no you fun. Do, if you do, but it's not a requirement. If you're a head you promoter, you don't have. You have fun. no fun, bro. If now, you're a head promoter, you got, contract. Well, some you got sixteen have responsibilities, bro, in those five hours. I think as the most as the most productive promoter, because there's some contract holders out here. Yeah, they just sit back and relax. Yeah, they have the not time. Good of promoters, life. I be seeing them busting tables. Bro, I I I'm be honest. I don't been I don't been security guard. I'd have been security guard. I'd have been a door person. Yeah. I'd have I'd have fucking brought bottles to a table. Yeah, I'd have facts. brought hookahs to a table. Like this. Bro, I'd, <laughs> with sparklers, know that. I'd have set up. Bro, I'd have prepared hookahs, bro. Hey, you gotta one, do what you one gotta do. I will paid. say though about right, the last, DJ last, thing. Last thought. Go ahead. I will say is that, and I'm not. I don't know if you've ever done it, but like everybody knows me about the DJ shit. Like I listen. So when you scratch and you fuck up, yep. the DJ looks my way and be like, "Damn, Monty heard that shit." But you but, see. Go ahead. But I've had DJs tell me out of respect for me and like my craft and how big I am on earring out to the craft, like of the party. I've had DJ come to the booth and be like, yo, Moss, what he played already? Where you think I should go with this direction? Love that. Bro, they respect that yep. shit from me a hundred, gang. That happened to me on Friday so, so last that, week. That, 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 That's that. a big thing because the DJ respects me and respects their craft enough to be that, like, yo. Yeah, that, that actually, is. wait a minute. I was with you last Friday. I was what I was with you last Friday, no? He was. was. Yeah, I was the last. Oh, okay, okay. Well, good DJs okay. will but go to the DJ that was before. Yeah, that, exactly. he, And they looked. He the spoke. List he on spoke what they with. Played. Look, believe it or not, Frank was, knows. I had entertainment right after Spin King set, and he was next. And they were there with the confetti blasters waiting. And Frank's like, "Hold on, I can't go into this route." He exactly. literally said, Woo! and then he peeped Beetlejuice. He peeped the mask. He peeped everything, and he went to the house. Cause that's what you gotta because, play for that. Yeah, so that that's, you remember. Yeah, yeah it was literally so, last Friday. So, I do, and Sammy, just, just real quick. I think that a good a quality of a good DJ is you have to talk to the other DJ before you and say, "Yo, where did you take did it? Where, like, Absolutely. where should I take it? Because if you go in there with one direction, how do you feel about that? No, in all reality, like you know, I usually try to get there 15 minutes before my set. Like, I really try to make that a thing just to, like, keep an ear, keep an eye on the crowd, see where the room is and stuff like that. If I'm, like, rushing in, like, bombarding and doing the whole nine, I'm going to be like, let's just say if they on trap. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to be like, how long you been rolling with this? Yeah, yeah, of course. You get what I'm saying? Did you What you did right before this? All right, cool. So I know the complete opposite You got to reset the party. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So even if I got to go from where they was at, if they was just on a million, and I got to even... Cause Yo, that's the thing. Like with with music, you get me. You could jump into an old school R and B set, and the crowd go crazy. Yeah. But you just gotta know in what yeah. direction to go. You, so you, you communication's key. It's also I know I've been hearing a lot even now that a lot of the upcoming DJs they don't res they don't have that respect where they know that if you're the opener or even the yeah, mid set, don't play where she goes bangers. by Bad Bunny. They don't. They don't the know songs, the concept, but they don't of have that respect where they'll just throw it out there, and then now the the closer or the mid set is not like, damn, what do I play? Yo, or but, like, and then but, you have to have a good mid set. And, and, and now, it, and, and it goes kind of back to the is. uptown com, uh, co uh, conversation because I think, honestly, the hardest set I've ever done in my life, mid set in an uptown crowd, a packed uptown party. Yep. Because the trappers and the scammers 
want to hear those prime time records. They want to hear as soon as they walk in, and they might walk in at one. They might walk in at one thirty, and it ain't and, and and it ain't two thirty yet. So you, in order to that, it, it just it just. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, your, I feel like your prime, one of one of your primes. Like I don't, I'm not saying that your prime right now, because I remember is me being 17, 16 year old sneaking into Argo room. Two in the morning, Frank Roth is either closing or in the middle, and that room is full of all the scammers, all the trappers, and the room changes. It goes from one direction to another direction. When you're a DJ, I was like, nah. You have to is reset. This? You have what to reset. What is this? I was faithfully there every Thursday. Every Thursday. Oh, that was such a I've good I've been there a few Thursday times. Thursday was a that different was such vibe, a good though. Because it was like, I've been there a few bro, times. It was like, but at that <laughs> time, still, all this like Latin trap shit, all this stuff wasn't like really like accepted. So those Thursdays was like the street days. Like you came in and you was listening to street music, you listened to tra- and trap, and it was just a different. It got energy. to the point where celebrities were going. Yes. There at a yeah, but I, I want to. I don't want to. I don't want to make it specifically about that. But anyways, let, let let's keep moving forward, guys. At what age are you too old for the club? Oh. The eight, the grandpa <laughs> promoters, don't the grandpa promote uptown. We have grandpa promoters. Who those who don't know, we have some promoters who are grandfathers. So what age is too old for the club? As customers or as promoters? Promoters, I think. Right, you said. I just said at what age is too old. I mean, look, if I'm forty, I'm still gonna be chilling in the club, like in a sense of just to go out and have fun. So I don't feel like I'm a grandpa. But I feel I just like you're have not a fun. promoter if you're forty years old. Well, I'm not saying that because I know so many forty year olds that I have respect for. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like, bro, like, so like what, what, what are you is... doing at this point? Like, like, are you gonna retire? There's, there's definitely there's no a there definitely should be there. like a goal or a plan yeah. to get out or. Do what you're doing on a higher scale or a bigger scale. Take what you've learned. Take your connections, your relationships, because that's what nightlife is. It's your relationships and connections mm-hmm. and who you meet. Talking the mic. Oh, it's your relationships, your connections, and who you meet. So how are you going to take that and turn it into just not arc on Thursday? <laughs> how are you going to change that to something else? Bro. You got you to have a goal. You got to have something else. Shit. Yeah, it gotta be something more for so, sure. I think I, I I saw this meme uh about nightlife. It's like, oh, you you're having a great time in nightlife until you're uh X X years old and you have nothing. You, you have no you have no 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 money saved. Right. See, that's you the, didn't you didn't you didn't develop anything. So now that's bad. That, that leads to my next question about, that I want to ask. But I'm sorry. Do you, do you have a certain age that you feel is too old to be in the club? Um, it's kind of like. I feel like if you want to go celebrate life, do it at whatever age you want. Yeah, uh, if nice. I see you in the club and you 70 and you popping it, Are you go ahead. Right I love you. <laughs> nah, I love that for you. Nah, but, I agree, though. But, but you guys, true. I feel like whatever age you want to go out to Shouldn't parties, go ahead. But also, I always say this to a lot of people. Um, the industry is very toxic. When you go out and you're just spending your money and you don't have life goals and you're going there to numb your feelings... Um, I feel like when you go to a club, you should go with good energy. A lot of people go to the club with bad energy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if your promoters I agree. Mean, some but when people's I, outlet is that. You can't th- that's their them. outlet, but I try to them. persuade the people that come party with me, come here on a good, no good energy. Yeah, because I've sure. seen when people come and they're upset, they're going through things, they're crying outside of the club. Like, it, it's bad. Ugh, bad energy. That's and, different, though. And I, I don't Disgusting. know. I'm the type of person, like, I feel energy a lot. So when I get home, I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted. Yep. Like, my energy is so low. Spent drained, And, bro. like, I have to take, like, two days where I'm, like, no parties, no clubs. Yeah, because facts. Because my energy is so low because you touching people, you hugging people. And, you know, a lot of these people are upset. And I feel like if you're going to come out to party, if you're going to come out. Breath stink heavy. If you're going to come out to party. Come party on a good note. Obviously, I get it. Some people use it as an outlet, but try not to. Try to have goals for yourself. Try to establish yourself. Stop wasting the money in the clubs if you don't need to. Don't yeah. come to my parties if you're going to ruin your life because of it. Come to my parties because you got the money to spend extra because of you, it. You had somebody uh, try to walk out on a tab uh, uh, oh on you, right? God. That's happened to me before. So, so uh <laughs> Uh, before we get to that, because I'm gonna get to that. I wanted to so ask now, you. do you have a? Do you have? Do you? Do you think there's a certain age where you're 40. too old for the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't listen. As a customer, I, I don't, know. let me tell you something. No, 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 no. Or we ain't talking about customers. We talking about working in nightlife. Okay. All right. So like a DJ and a promoter. 
Look, I'm gonna say this. So you can't I be said, 40 and DJ? DJs who are the latest DJs right look, now. Look, hold yeah, on. they're over 40. Yeah, damn near no, but, 50, 50. But check yeah. it, check it. Yes. You know what? I feel like I feel like in all reality, in and all reality, cool. like we could name. But they're doing them. other they, shit. That they're they all over tomorrow, 40. Mm. No, nah, but my thing is, you need to get to a certain point that you're doing this because you want to. If you're still DJing at 40 years old because you have to, it's a difference. You took. Too many turns that you wasn't supposed to. In all I, reality, you yeah, get what yeah, I'm that saying? I, I agree with and, that. And I agree. literally, literally, like I, I said this, like from even like ten years back, I said, by the time I'm 35, I'm be DJing because I want to, not because I have to, because I really love it. So of course, I, I don't give a fuck. I'm be 90 years old, probably still kicking records, but I don't have to. I can still choose to sit home for the next two, three years. You get what I'm saying? Now, if this is still your hustle at 40. Oh my God! Like that's like living at home with hey. your mother. <laughs> like you, <laughs> what are we doing? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't agree with that. But okay, okay. I, I so, wanna. Can I just say something? I, I, all right, real quick, because I, I do want to get to people running out on their tabs. <laughs> as a, why as you a keep person, bringing that up? You was there. <laughs> as a person, almost. I, as a person who's been in the nightlife, as a as a customer Gavin. and as a as a promoter, something important that especially a lot of young kids gotta realize that, bro. In the moment, it may seem like you're being celebrated, like all these people fuck with you, all these people love you. But bro, the moment you broke, you're not, you don't have enough money to come and spend that money. These promoters, not all of them, most will not care about you. The bartenders won't care about you. The hookah person not caring about you. You could be, if you are like you, someone who had a lot of respect, and you come back, they're gonna show you lots of love, of course. But let me tell you something. Don't go and waste your money trying to impress a bunch of people who, in the next five years. Some of them might not be there. Some of them might be dead. Some might be going to jail. Some of them might have moved on into other things. That's something very important for these young kids coming up, bro, is that, like, they go and waste the money that they, whether, whether they risk their freedom for or whether they work 40 hours a week for. And then they're not doing it for fun. They're doing it because they're trying to keep up with the Joneses and our little generation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, that's just something very important that I want to tell these kids. Like, you know, every five years, and everybody in this room has seen that, every three to five years, a new group of people comes in and there's a new crew spending the money, there's a new whatever this person is called, the new killers, the new scammers, the new drug dealers. Every three to five years, either people die, people go to jail, or people change their life. Facts. Don't care, but don't yeah. don't worry about none of that shit. That shit is all like stupid. Like, you know, we make money off of it, so a lot of us stay into it, but don't let that shit get into your head. Like, shit is not important. This is not important. Nightlife is just something that you're supposed to come have fun at. Nightlife is important. So, uh, we were uh, we we talked about a, a, a couple things and there's a lot of things that I that I want to talk about but uh, uh, unfortunately we're on time restraints. <laughs> um, have you guys ever seen a DJ copy another DJ style? Yeah. Every yeah. day. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. They gotta they gotta they gotta copy what's hot. They gotta they gotta have a foundation to start. Look at Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, this, that. Like, they started from MJ. It's just how it is. You you follow what's there. It's like a template. That's why there's a lot of other f mini Frank Rolfs. There's a lot of mini this and that. Because they copy what was already there first, and then they try to change it up and make your own style, in a sense. But, yeah, of course. They got to go by what's there. How else would you know? You got to start from somewhere. Interesting. Interesting. No matter what you say, bro, it's you're, you're copying what was there before you. That's your influence. That's your role models. Interesting. So, mm, I feel like what really sets you apart, though, is if yes, you take like the foundation of how to do things, but make it into your own. Yeah. Um, like be being creative. I feel like a lot of people are not creative nowadays. They're like lazy. They don't want to like do the work. But I feel like. If you really care about your brand, you're going to put in the work. You're going to treat it like a nine to five. You're going to get up in the morning and you're going to re research what is hot right now, how to market. I feel like DJs need to learn how to market a little bit better. And I feel like if they studied it or like take some online classes, do some extra things to make yourself better. I feel like people have just been comfortable with like their DJ payout and they don't do anything else for themselves. And honestly, that's why a lot of DJs have you ever seen somebody off. that's like a carbon copy, though? 
Um, I haven't. I oh, just you looked at me. I do know some DJs that be like doing drops when they're they're not like heavy hitters or shit the block and they oh. get in trouble really quick. I'm gonna have to drink again. <laughs> I don't like to name names. You, because you've heard DJs with the shake the block drop or yes, the heavy hitter or with drop. the heavy hitter and we'll, I'll literally text Bobby. How do Bobby. they got those drops? Nah, I've never heard that. I'll before. literally text Bobby or I'll text Jamie and I'll be like, yo, they're playing the drop. Jamie was here for the last uh Nightlife episode that I did, and she definitely, and they named names and everything, so that was pretty interesting. So. I love Jamie. Honestly, <laughs> you you kind of, I met Jamie at the, you know, at Bobby's um, uh, New Year's Eve party, but from there, I think, like, us being in this interview together really established, like, like she's my best friend now. On top of that, we do business together, so super thankful for you on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just felt like you guys were, were going to mesh, but um, yeah. Sammy. Um... Yeah. Has a DJ ever copied your style? I feel like all the females copy her shit. Mm. Dead ass. Mm. What, 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 what females? And I'm not saying that, huh? What females? What females? You said the females. Like all the upcoming females like that... who? There's only like five, bro. Like who? I mean, I, I, it's hard because of where's, her... Where's the... Where's the... What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was... Yo, no, Frank no, 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 no. I'm gonna, that, I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say what I want, but I, I gotta I, say with respect to who she is as a female. So mm-hmm. I don't wanna say... I don't know what's the word. You get me? It's sensitive for me. Like, I'm very culture sensitive. I can't say dyke. I can't say... You know, like... I don't know. fucking dyke. It's fine. It's me. Right, cool. Yeah, like, you know... I, like, but still, like, that's just me, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna... I don't know what that word is, but there's other dykes that try to be a DJ, and I feel like they try to follow her steps. But who? I mean... Yeah, take a shot. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know if she's a dyke or not, yeah. but there's can, a couple can, queens in Brooklyn girls you, that are trying can, to DJ right now, you, and I feel like okay. they're copying her. That's great, but can you... I just want to make sure that... That wasn't a shot. That, that was that was bullshit. Yeah, I feel like I'm the only one that has taken real shots other than you. Yeah, yeah. I, I right? feel like you guys have taken a I've shot. Been my you know what? Let's I just do. took three of them. Let's, let's, no, you didn't. No, you I just didn't. took three back to back. I, I don't believe let's you, Papa Indio. Here you are. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do a cheers? We do cheers, cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers, salud, salud. Ah, yeah. It looks like water, but it ain't. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, that's what I meant. Like the 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 bi or gay or whatever they are called. I feel like they copying her swag. Period. I mean, the 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 raw reality, like, and this is where it became controversial in my career, and this is why I've always had to work three times as hard. I never get my respect till after the set. After the set. Everybody always wants to be my friend mm. because I make sure my presence is known. Mm. I've always worked double time on my MC game. I've always worked uh, double time on my, my, you understand, my production, my studying my music. I do this shit 24-7. I literally climb in a rabbit hole and I wake up every single day at 9 a.m. learning what's the hot music, learning what's this, learning what's that, going into different scenes and tapping in because it's like, being a gay female DJ and being aggressive is that automatically, you understand, I get hit up with a, hey, we're doing this gay thing. It becomes a thing. So in my career, I've always been a thing. And, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years, and the whole gay thing just became okay openly in the yes. industry. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. like, I've never booked Sammy in my life, right? We've crossed paths, like, here and there. I've yeah. never booked her. But if any time... DJs have asked me, like, yo, who's the hottest female DJ or who's nice? Mm. I always said Sammy Blends. Thank you. And I've never booked her in my fucking life. Still to this day, have I? No, never. We no, we definitely cross paths Pass. a lot. We know a lot of mutual yes. people and stuff like that. Never. You know why? I've seen her mixes. I've seen her scratch. I've seen her blend. That's why her name is what it is. And I'm like, she's fucking nasty, Which bro. Which brings me to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so great. But that's, by the way, I just want to let you, like, I already let it know, but yeah, I've always said that. Even when it came to the newcomers, like, I've always no, said I that. I appreciate that. So, I'm like, yo, bro, she's nice, bro. Like, it is what no, it is. I just never uh, got the chance to, kudos, like, meet her, meet her, and book Sammy. her. Kudos to Sammy, for sure. <laughs> uh, what, what I yeah, do yeah, want to sure. say is, uh, as, uh, uh, as a female in this game, have you ever felt the pressure or, like, anybody's ever tried to put pressure on you to look a certain way to get work done on your body or stuff like that in order to please a certain audience. Absolutely. Um, Early on in my career, I'm not going to say any names because I don't want to be a little too controversial with that because of where I'm at in my career. You get what I'm saying? But I did uh, deny a major contract. It was a contract that uh, they were going to hand me a shit ton of money with management, endorsements, 
the whole nine. And the first thing that was presented on the table, I went there with a really good friend of mine that he was giving me guidance. And um, he wasn't really my manager, but um, he was a really big bouncer in the game. However, you know, he guided me into like a lot of different networks and, you know, he had my back a lot because he met me on the streets. I was like an adolescent as a kid. You get what I'm saying? So um, what ended up happening was that, um, you know, this was before the whole Young and May thing and the whole nine and it was very controversial. And female DJs really wasn't a thing. Like the culture got killed with that. And mind you, it's been, this has been going on since back in the 80s. Like you get what I'm saying? But now it's like a female thing, right? So what happened was uh, they laid down, um, we just want to work on her imaging. And I remember my big dog, he looked at me, he looked over his shoulder and he said, are you ready right now? He said, we could walk out of here right now. He said, because this is you. Are you going to allow anybody to change you? And, you know, in that moment, it's everything that I, I was striving toward, I was working toward, because don't get it twisted. Like I mentioned earlier, I never had a nine-to-five job. However, it's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and a lot of groundwork, especially me being true to myself within this whole thing. So when it came down to it, I looked at him, and it was just like I just thought back to my grandmother because my grandmother's actually the one that raised me. And if she did nothing in her power to ever question me, ever try to change me, I've been dressing how I've dressed. Why should I since what Like, since I was a youngin', she's always allowed me to be me. My family <clears throat> has never applied that pressure. I was one of those fortunate people in my life. You get what I'm saying? Why would I change just for a couple of dollars or something of the sort? And I looked at him, and, and he was like, you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm going to take the long route on this. And let me tell you something, like, you know, I've come across a lot of good people, a lot of promoters, and a lot of people know me, like, in the nightlife, in the industry and stuff like that, and I pay homage to a lot of people. I'm very humble in the game and stuff like that, but my career, even to this point, like, 15 years down the road is when I slightly started getting some type of flowers, and I came up with a lot of people around me, but it was because I always chose to stay true to myself. That's the raw reality. So that's why I advocate so much to the culture toward the culture of like the the DJ world. You get what I'm saying? Like I really take this whole thing personal. I love you that. Feel me? I'm, uh, that so, as another like woman hearing that, I love that you stay true to yourself. Yeah, and don't and get I it. didn't let nobody tell you what you should be. I love that. that and it that's, was that's amazing. It was it was tough, honestly, especially like coming up in the game and and you understand people just trying to always put my back against the wall. Like I said, I I even even still to this day I get respect midway through my set because it's like I still walk in a lot of ignorant rooms. I still walk into, a, you understand, I'm Hispanic on top of it all. And I have a very distinct image. It's a lot of cultural diffusion so, and shit and, and behind then I, it. I'm openly gay. I'm not going to hide who I am. That's what I was going to say. As a gay woman, you understand? It, it, I feel like you have to work twice as hard as, let's say, me. You have to work twice as hard as me in order to get that recognition. You know what's crazy? This Absolutely. might be... Uh, little bit kind of crazy, but if you was to start probably like eight years after the time you started, it probably would have been so much easier for you because of how big Absolutely. gay and this and that and the whole pride and everything is. But the fact that you started that shit, like you're the pioneer for the females in that industry, mm -hmm. Thank you. in this industry as a gay woman, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Like that's deep. And I'm not gonna lie, like, and like you know, I gotta you, you fought through the struggle. Yeah. And I gotta, to I gotta give way. a big shout out to my sister Blue Diamond on here, like yeah, I was, for real. I was gonna bring her up because, yeah. um, because on some G shit, like when me and Blue met, like you know, like I was already like circulating a lot in the industry and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I was doing mixes and, and all that together. Lives yeah, like we in linked the crib. up, and she was like, you know, she was she already had like the gist of DJing, but like she wanted to polish up her skills and learn like a little more. So me and her got in tune. And in the sense, I kind of started, like, mentoring her. Yeah, yeah, sense. you definitely did. And, and you know, we it. chopped it up in the whole nine. And still to this day, that's, like, one of the number one people that's given me support. Even even back when I came out of jail, that was the very yeah, first that's... person that hit me up and said, Sammy, come meet me. You are coming out with me. And uh, we ended up at the carnival. That was my first event out. And she's never given me anything less. So I just got to give her her flowers on 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 her just being true, like for real. That's one of my. That's actually stories. where I've so, I, I've saw recently when she came home her 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 skills and that's so why I was like, oh, 
So she's Lou. the best female All DJ right, right now. <laughs> you did Tommy's event too, yeah, right? That, yeah, that's yeah, Tommy. That's shout out to uh, Tommy. Yo, shout out to Tommy. Tommy. Tommy's the first person that brought me out to do a sour shit. And also, place. also, <laughs> I, 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 actually, she, she <laughs> DJed right after me. That, that night. Yeah, 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 Tommy I told I me that he was going to bring her, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy she's out. Because <laughs> honestly, whether you believe it or not, like there was a lot of people behind you, and they're like, yo, when is she getting out? Because you just. Facts. Uh, honestly, like, mm-hmm. I remember starting to see you, like, in the Tommy events, and you started really coming into Jersey. And I was like, yo, she's great. And then we started having you at our events, and then yeah. it, everything happened. You went up, you ended up going to jail, and I'm like, oh, my God, she was such good talent. And I was like, yo, we cannot wait for you to come back. I remember back. Like, her. You, you, believe it or not, a lot of people were praying for you, you know, to come out and, and you know, like, no, do I'm great. That. Thank you. Know? you. Uh, good vibes for sure. Um, So I want to I wanna get to something a little bit more lighthearted. <laughs> and I want to... Le- le- it's a lighthearted. Oh, something man. a little bit, you know... Something toxic. Yeah, yeah, something a little bit more toxic. <laughs> <real quick. laughs> I want to... I wanna t- <laughs> All right. So I want to I wanna, I wanna so talk ugly. to Gabby because Gabby's been a little bit quiet. <laughs> Name me three things that you can't stand that a DJ does. Oh, my God. <laughs> three things that you can't stand. Oh. I got a list. Hold on. We don't got that much time. Okay. When they don't know how to read the room and go into a, like a type of genre that is not for the area you're in. Okay, they can't read the room. Yeah. Um, they stay quiet or set. They don't my to, game. They don't know, they don't how, know to how, how to have MC. Okay. Um, and they want to bring in 15 people. For free. <laughs> okay. And, and 15, the 15 <laughs> I people like that. In, in the DJ pool. In the, in the booth. <laughs> oh, so for week. free and in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. That's, that, all right, Another that, table next to them, which you, sometimes that's the best table in certain places. <laughs> okay, okay. So those are three things. Okay, Dios Sammy. Mio. Oh, three things that I that, hate that, DJ that, do? That you hate when DJs do it. Talk too fucking much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Like a DR DJ. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've, had, I've left clubs with headaches. Talk too much. <laughs> I get not read the room. That's okay. like key factor. And... I don't know, like, yo, honestly, just... If you only got two, you only got two. Yeah, I only got two. All right, go ahead, Priscilla. You said three, right? Three, yes, I said three. Okay. uh, Not five, three. Okay, being late aggravates me. Um, (laughs) Frank Rowe looked at me right away. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know why? Nah, 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 no, I don't. Bro, be told Um, 225, I'm calling him on FaceTime. That's not true, that's not true. That is not true. (laughs) No, I'm saying I do that. To you. Yeah, you be doing too much, bro. If, if, <laughs> hey, if my set is at two, and not to tell you, Priscilla, I'm sorry. I'm but sorry, I just got to make this clear. Now, now I'm, you know what? I'm going I'm to wait till my time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I said one, uh, be late. Two, I probably, this is really number one, but don't come to a set drunk. What's wrong with or you? Oh Absolutely oh, that's not. That's ugly. That's nasty. Absolutely <laughs> not. That is not okay. Like, you're on the job. Like, uh, it's one thing if you a little tipsy and you gonna give me the best set of your life because you fill in the liquor a little bit. But when you come drunk, nah, <laughs> it's not gonna fly. Like, I, I, that ass will not book you no more. Anyways, um, and three. third... Look at that. I, I thought you had like seven she said right now. You only got two. I do two. have a list. It's just like I'm trying to pick. <laughs> you better hurry um, up. It's <laughs> definitely not promoting the event like how we promote you. Okay. For sure. Like that that's that gets me irritated, especially if I'm hitting you up like, yo, like I'm hitting you up like seven days before. Like, yo, the events. Cause people plan their days, their weekends out. Thank you. So when you're trying to promote the day before, and especially if I'm paying a high a, a, a high budget DJ, <laughs> hey, Monty feels it's this. offensive. It's offensive and it's not okay. And DJs, doesn't matter where you are. If yeah. you feel like you cannot catch up to your promo, get an assistant. You getting paid good enough to go get an assistant and make sure that your social media marketing is running the right way. There's and I say for this to DJs coming up, to DJs that have been in the game, and especially the OGs. Like every Everybody got to step it up because at the end of the day, yep. no matter who you are, it, it's it's a bad look if you're not promoting the party the way that we're promoting you. Okay. Facts. Okay, so that, that's three. So obviously that's one of yours. Nah. nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that, that's not one of yours? Impossible, uh, Monty. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Knowing who you are, <laughs> how is that not one of your let me three? Say my three. Go ahead. All right. Number one. I right, fuck it. Fine. We'll go with yes, that. Yes. I know that. <laughs> Yo, you know what it is, bro? Like, from no, ex- you don't gotta explain. Go ahead. Number no, two. F- no, from experience, like it's 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 a big thing because 
you're going to help me push it and I'm going to help you push you. Mm-hmm. So he knows, yo, give me a video drop. It's Monday. Yo, it's Hands Tuesday. Hands down the most annoying promoter yes. I've, I ever deal with. But with the that. most consistent yes. fucker that bitch. there All is. Right. Go ahead. So yes. yeah, so definitely like the whole marketing, promoting flyers and like the whole like pet peeve of like let's push each other mm-hmm. and let's get it out there because people make their plans Monday, Tuesday, bro. Some girls' birthdays and guys' birthdays are on Sunday and they're like, yo, where am I going Friday? Mm-hmm. Oh shit, Frank Rose over here. Let's go there. So mm-hmm. yes. The whole marketing thing, that's, yes. That's one. For sure. Um, two is train stops. Don't tell me stop one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear that. If you got six train stops on Friday night, I'm not booking you, bro. When he says train stops, he means like yes. different clubs that you're DJing. Yes, yes, bro. And then what they do is... There's no exclusivity. Nothing at all. Bro, back to the budget. Bro, mm-hmm. 11 to 1, they're at this club. 1 to 2, they're at this club. How are you going to get from 1 to 1 <laughs> right. in, the, in the fucking next yeah. set? <laughs> I don't give a fuck what train Damn you got. Ah. I'm what? not gonna lie, I book, I book gigs like that. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, I'm not bad. That's trapping. Bro, I can't, I can't, I can't bro. I can only do two parties a yo, night. Yo, Sammy, you on my good side. Ah, not gonna do that to you. I can, I, can, I can only do two parties a night for that reason. Yo, bro, I, that's why you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know your value. DJ and, train stop, nigga. Then, <laughs> that, that's why I'm not lie. That's why you gotta give it to Adoni. He his price is insane. He brings people out. That's he does what, one spot. That's what he does. But that's why he tries what he tries. But when to. when you get paid more, a different breed from like that, though, the general like conversation. When you get paid more than fifteen thousand dollars, Sheesh. you don't need. Exactly. To have <laughs> 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 nah, you don't need we gotta stop. take at least two yeah, stops. Yeah, we, we need at least two stops. I need but five stops in a day, my bro. Bro, I've seen Some it. That's what three hundred dollars deep. Bro, 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 bro. And then it's one. And then they have ninety bookings. There's one to two, and then it's two. Two to yo, three bro, you and laugh though? Two thirty to the four. DJs who do that, they're so proud of and that. And then they got the after. How you doing? Yo, the DJs and who the do that, they're not forget about that. They're so proud of that, bro. Bro, they're proud of it. Like I, I'm fully booked all month, and out of every day is six bookings. Like, okay. that's bro. How can nuts. you do one to two and two to two, two thirty and to then, four? Bro, you know what pisses me off? <laughs> You're gonna DJ in both spots at the same thirty minutes. Nah, you know what pisses me off on a personal level? <laughs> like what? Them niggas be the first niggas that don't have no bread. How? Mm. You working? I want to say family? something. Go, go ahead. I feel like Damn, if man. you're getting booked in Jersey, it should be one place in Jersey and one place yep. in New York. And I feel like your value will go up so much. Yep. And if you want to, then you can up your price because now you're being very exclusive. exclusive. Or let's say if you take one uptown, one downtown, one Jersey, cool. But you shouldn't be doing three places... You know, and they're down the block from each other. In, in uptown, that happens a lot with and, the younger and, and stuff. And two places in Jersey doesn't. And and one thing about That's me, uptown. DJs, uptown you cannot like go book in the same town that I'm at. You cannot do that. It, I will literally clip your set and put somebody else. I've done it. I've, I've done redone it. my flyer. Oh, you want to take a double booking in the same town? You're clipped. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's also in back. Go ahead. Frank, the last, Frank, last one. Frank, know about that. Uptown, you have a person DJ in Republica. DJ and Opus and DJ and Luxor at the same. All these clubs day. are less than a mile away. But that's like to us promoters. Bro, but they're all in the same circle. Uh, block. No, yeah, yeah, literally. But the thing is, so <laughs> it's kind of tough. That's another thing about Uptown, though. That so many people want a club. Yeah, you might, there, there is three or four top clubs in the same block. Yeah, it's block. Very it's competitive. the same block. It's very competitive. Yeah, well, then, the same DJ will, will cater to different crowds, but you're still not exclusive. So, yeah, but so, you still shouldn't do that. I'm only yeah. at two. Uh, so, so go ahead. The third one. All right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm only at two. So DJ Train Stop. Um, number three. You gotta think about it. I thought you had it ready, bro. Cause I don't wanna violate. Um not violate. 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 Y'all barely, y'all barely drank anyway. So. First of all, Tito's getting No, drank. Tito, Tito's different, but I'm God. on this Dolly. Yeah. No, no, you're not. Oh, so you slacking. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Vape Master over here. You slacking over there. Yeah. Hell no. That's it. I'm done with the vape. Mm-hmm. All right, so number three. On, wait, what was the first one? A booking. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> All right, just set the third one. Move on. Move on. Dude, I don't got train that much stop. time. That's right, it. Um, the third one, honestly, honestly, it's probably skills, bro. When skills. you have no skills. Like, just your skills are off. If and that possibly. blending, transitioning, DJ sound effects, like... Skills, bro. Like 
You gotta. That goes to read the room and all that too, by the way. But your oh, when skills. When you press that button, fucking thirty times in one. Yeah, that's, that was, that's, that's DJ what sound I was gonna effect. Say, that's that's, that's, mine yet. that's DJ sound effect. That's annoying. So so skills, bro. Still scared okay, about so that. so that that was gonna be my thing that skills. I was gonna say like mm-hmm. skills. <laughs> DJ sound effect. Like, oh, yo, that is that is my number one pet peeve about DJs. What are too many shout outs? Like, have you noticed like when when a DJ has too many sound effects? In my in my mind, it's like, yo, dude. Don't you notice that you're ODing, number one? Yeah. And number two, there's a thousand DJs with that same. Or the. You all use the same exact sound effects. That's why I get mad when people use fake elephant sounds. Oh my God, I've heard that before. And I swear, we said something right away. Absolutely not. Don't be disrespecting my boy Frank Rob. (laughs) Don't do that. Or they copy my sets. That that is very frustrating. But then your set shouldn't be copyable, bro. No, yes it is. There's a new feature on Shazam. Let me tell you. Let me put you on. You know about the feature? What? If you hold the Shazam button, right? It goes on auto Shazam, and they can keep it in their pockets, so you don't even oh, see them Shazam. I have no problem. I have no problem with a DJ. Because listen, there's been times that I've been like, "Yo, that song is fire." Can and I elaborate on what I said though? When you're done? But, oh sure, but but like I'll be like, "Okay, that song is fire. I need that song. I don't know what that song is. No problem, Shazam. Man. I got no problem with that." But when you're saying you're setting up the songs the same way that I set them up. Like for example, that's auto shazam. That, but, but, but you I, have a nice but blend. But I'm saying and they blend talking the oh. into the song or saying certain things. Like for example, one thing that I love saying is, "Look at your bestie right in her eyes and tell her I love you, bitch." Mm-hmm. Tell her that, like you shit like that. When I hear other DJs copy word for word what I say in, the in order to set up things. That drives me crazy. Oh, that I got off. another one no in your lines. You already actually heard this the other day. Damn, what, what DJ was on? Because I swear to God, I would have put him on blast right now. But my point is, when you copy, <laughs> when you copy what I say, it's like, yo, I, it's like, disrespectful. Call me daddy at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Yo, what you say? She, uh, if she don't know this song, she's she too young. If she don't know this song, she's too young for you, Yeah, bro. yeah. Yo, I forgot where I was at. Fuck, that was just The point is, that. that shit irritates me, but I'm sorry. Gabby, because I got one last question. I got to I gotta go quick. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of these DJs, and I, I say his name all the time. I'm going to fuck. Spin King, the specific one. Bro, if you, if I already, if I've been to, let's say, Opus Friday, right? Next week, you're, I'm, you're in Queens doing a set on Friday, and it's the same set as Opus. Then how can you complain about somebody copying your set? It's literally the same set. If I know, I got no Spin King, and I ain't gonna lie, at one point, bro, when we was in Arca, he used to play this song a lot. But I know what Spin King says, and when he, and what, why he draw, and why, and then when, and, he, what he's and about every to do. set, he's gonna play the fucking Fab and Kobe song. Uh, you know what song I'm the talking black about? Black in my back black and my I boys know boys every boys. fucking place I'm gonna go to. <laughs> he's gonna play that song. Yo, Spin King, and I know nigga, where he's going. We, Shout out to the big homie. Where he's going? Many man, Spin King. Song. Many, 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 oh. many men. God damn, Yo, bro. you know who my big homie is? Da, da, da. You don't know what you heard <laughs> about me. You my nigga. But <laughs> it's happening. Back up mind my business. Back up mind of my business. That's his intro, though. It's so known. That's his intro. I know your set, bro. Bro, like, literally, bro, I kid you not, I kid you not. There was a period of time where I used to be around a certain promoter like he used to love to take me out places like just as a bro as a, as a young nigga coming up and he took me like I started like two weeks in a row to different places because he was really cool with Spin King and literally I heard Spin King set the same set seven times but I'm gonna be honest with you I'm gonna be honest I'm with like, you though this song is coming ahead, last, word, be, last I'm word I'm gonna be honest with you it was like that for a minute like his so like his under, under Undertaker dong gongs like the doom doom yeah. and he drops the great young graveyard that shit is fire I've heard people copy that shit but that's a damn shame yeah that's bad and I, I spoke told you, to Spin King literally a week ago about that shit that's but, whack I, but recently he's been switching it up because of that reason because it's to. been <laughs> like, fall off. Be, but 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 that <laughs> was guys, like his crazy. big intro because of the whole branding thing. I have an intro so as well. That I, I agree. Do, so I understand. Yeah, he does it too with the it's Netflix like and the. Like, oh, no, and I don't do that. Too, that song no. is like his outro. That I that you know no I do the Fox intro. Yes, that one. Yeah, okay, yeah. just to make it very not clear. Netflix, I'm not but, copying. You know what I'm saying? You got a problem, man? You got a Bronx, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being a part of this. Yes, we are done. There's so much shit that we have to talk about. There's so much more, but listen. 
want the contract holders, We've gone man. for over two and a half hours. You trying so, to like, sub we, me, my we, nigga? We talked a lot about a lot you of trying things. trying to sub me? So Cheers. salute to all you guys. Salute. Much love. <laughs> Elephant Pick, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you tune in, you subscribe, you like, you comment. All of that matters for the algorithm. And I'll see you at the next episode. Are you dumb? We out of here. Peace.